Hi everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. A big good evening to you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you guys are here. Welcome is our day two of the 20 summit. So good to be here, so good to be here. Welcome everyone, welcome everyone. If you can see me, if you can hear me, just drop something here. Yep. Welcome, Miracle. Good to see you. I saw you yesterday. Welcome. Welcome, Miracle. Yeah, I'm sure you're so excited. I'm really pumped, right? Because yesterday gave me a lot of, I mean, I, I started doing a lot of things I learned yesterday and started putting in the work, right? So Miracle and everybody here, I mean, can you just tell us what you learned yesterday? What was the defining moment? And we had, you no, know, we had amazing speakers. We had Dr. Obi Ezekiel for the um, keynote session. And we had a lot of other amazing panelists. So can you tell us what was the most important thing for you, what you really learned? What was the highlight for you yesterday? Looking forward to hearing you. Welcome, everyone. What was the key highlight for you yesterday? And today is going to be an amazing day. I hope I hope you're ready. I hope you're pumped. I hope you're you're extremely excited. Welcome, Dockers. Welcome, Dockers. So good to see you. What was the major highlight of for yes of yesterday for you? What what did you really learn? What did you take away? As, as I mean, as the thing you learned from the session. Welcome, Petra. Welcome. Good to have you here. Welcome, everyone. We're starting now. Welcome. Can you just share with us what was your key highlights? Well, please, and while you're doing that, please feel free to share with your friends and make sure you like, right? Make sure you like it because it helps our algorithm, makes people to see it, see what we are doing on YouTube and all the other platforms. The yeah, miracle is saying, my yesterday's highlight for me was the power of collaboration by Dr. Obi. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, she emphasized that yes, we need to start small, but I mean, collaboration is what will help us for for the for the future, right? Collaboration is what will bring us to those dreams that we have. Thank you, Miracle. That was a very, very, very important um thing that she thought yesterday. I mean, she thought all that having a non-negotiable character, right? Yeah, thank you, Amara. So good to see you. Amara is saying that. Be intentional about your goods, what, where, and the people you spend your time with. Yeah, that was very timely too. We learned that you need to be very intentional about everything you are doing at every point in time. You need to know how you spend your time. You need to know how you rush on your time. Make sure that you're investing your time wisely. And I mean, yeah, it was it was really a power pack session, right? And before we go into the, I mean, to day two, which is an amazing day, we have three different sessions for you. We have, a, we have a speaker, we have a panel session, and we have, I mean, an amazing keynote. Before we go into that, we want to talk about a movie in the park. Um, I mean, a December party that we've been doing, right? And we've been doing the, the movie in the park in in Lagos, right? But this particular time, we're going to be doing it in Lagos and in Ibadan, right? And it's happening on the 7th, 7th. And the technical team will help us to, to show that up in a few minutes, in a few seconds. It's now. December, the most moment. wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. All right, it's all December, right. the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. 
Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. 
Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach Uniru, Lagos on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's Welcome guys, welcome guys, welcome guys. I'm sure you're all excited to be here. Thank you everyone. Um, please just tell us. You need to just are you looking forward to today's session before we so thank you for me. Please make sure you like this. It helps our algorithm, yes, for people to see what we are doing online. Please make sure you like this, make sure you share with your friends. Welcome, Stephanie. Welcome, Ibube. Welcome, Dami. Welcome, Precious. I see all of you. Welcome. And I hope you enjoyed day one. Yesterday was, was an amazing session, right? And today is day two. We're moving right into it. Today we have, I mean, three wonderful sessions, right? And the first session, we're going to be talking about relationships. And I know that that is one thing that is on everybody's mind, right? Relationships, right? And the topic for that is achieving success by optimizing your relationships. That's the first session. So the second session is going to be, I mean, a mental panel, building to last the journey and all it takes. We're going to be teaching you how it takes from top professionals in the industry, right? And the last session is going to be by, um, it's going to, it's going to be a keynote keynote session by Juliet, right? Director of Google World, and we'll be talking about living your best life, the pathway to fulfillment. I hope you guys are excited as I am, and we'll go right right into this first session right and the media will play the video for our first speaker and we'll go straight up into it welcome everyone well maybe i'm the surprise speaker right <laughs> can you hear me sure yeah i can hear you welcome uh, our speaker is there, yeah, it's going to be joining soon, but I just had to just 
just joining the conversation. How have you been? How has the conversation for you done? It's been good. It's been good. I think we should even engage a bit, right? I mean, yeah. yeah so I mean, yeah. Uh, so I just want me? to say in the comment. Yeah, loud and clear. I can hear you. Can you hear me too? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to see in the comments how people, how the conversation yesterday was for a lot of people. Um, I see that a lot of people joined. I mean, it was it was it was mind blowing. Like especially the conversations with. Um, Dr. Obi especially, and of course, even the panelists. Um, I mean, I like the fact that we had like, different arrays of panels, right? So you see, you have people from the NGO space who are student DOD. You have people who have built international careers, like Adi Tutu from Google. By the way, Tutu had done a lot of work on a lot of marketing projects from, from YouTube and Google over the last four years or more. Yes, we saw um, came on a banjo, he's doing incredible stuff in Makizi. And of course, also the president of CU alumni. And we also saw um, Valley of Number. And I'm quite interested in the Valley of Number story because I know how that they started and they transitioned the product about four or five times, right? And that's to show you that this is really what we're talking about when we talk about building to last night. These things take time, right? Um, it doesn't just yes. happen overnight. You literally have to put in the work. You literally have to work extra hard to ensure that the result you're looking to get you get it actually so so i'm super excited i'm super looking forward to our speakers today i just want to have a conversation because our speaker is going to be joining soon but it's not it's not yet out um, i'm sure the tech team will let me know when he's here but i just wanted us to have a conversation as regards um why why wh why are you part of the of the team trying to try what, what have you enjoyed so far in the last couple of years since you've been part of the team uh, what have been your highlight moments and I would like people in the comment section who are members of the Trendy Tribe also to talk about the experience in the Trendy Tribe, either any experience, either they have been there for one month, six months, one year, or two years. Just tell us how has it been for you, though, as a as a member of Trendy Tribe. Show us that with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a really amazing question, really. And I'm waiting for you guys' response. I'll just go ahead, right? I mean, I found out about Trendy Tribe. I was sometime in november 2020 right i just joined the session i just i think i saw it on fellow directories instagram and decided to join and from there it's been it's been different level of i mean of progression i must say right i mean i met david through that process i met a lot of people through that process i've been doing things for trying to strive join the team i mean it's been a lot of amazing experiences right and we started like a career leaders network a while ago where we bring mentors, top professionals in the game, top HR professionals. Like we have Lawa Yeko, the head of Flower Muse in the food division of um, food division in the HR department. And we had other mentors like that, right? That we bring together. We do different sessions monthly, right? And it's been it's been very wonderful. Like we see people, people's career move from year to year. It's been really transformational for me personally. Like it's even helped me to network, helped me to know people help me to um, advance in my career, basically, right? Welcome, Saka. Welcome, Kosemani. And um, yeah, that I saying, looking forward to more amazing contents today, because yesterday was explosive. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I mean, you would like, you would like to hear your experience on Twenty Stripe for the last few years, when you joined Twenty Stripe, and what has, been, what has the IRS been for you? And is this your first experience with Twenty Stripe? Hello, stands fashion. I can see you. Looking forward to today's session. Yeah, so guys, we're waiting for your comments before we bring us our next speaker. We'd like to hear from you. How has how has Twenty Stripe been for you? How how have you been impacted? How have you enjoyed it so far in the last couple of years? We'd like to really hear from you because today is day two of our summit. Yeah, Peter's is saying yesterday was mind blowing. Yes, welcome, Peter's. Really mind blowing. I totally agree even me myself i was wild right i even started preparing my my personal statement to myself early this morning because i was like wow i need to i need to i mean i need to work on myself i need to have those things that they taught us yesterday i need to build myself i need to be confident about things that i want to chase or go after right yeah expert yeah oh because mary since your first time returning to travel oh that's nice we're, we're really glad to have you and welcome to the tribe then I triber. <laughs> Good to have you, Kosemani. I think welcome to the tribe. Welcome to the tribe. 
and for i mean since since you're just joining us i mean we are we are over like we're over ten thousand people in their 20s right we're trying to get our careers right we're trying to progress we're trying to move on yes and moina is saying only join 20s tribe and i'm almost sad that all the amazing things that you must have missed Link, looking forward to greater things moina really i can tell you that there's so much more right and if you attended um the hobby session you remember when she said about we have to build individuals and build institutions so friendship is here for you too i mean even your children even your children's children so i mean we you, you don't 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 feel sad that you've missed much you've not missed much we'll take you along just make sure you join the community miracle john is saying join this tribe is a community that has room for everyone to grow and shine wow i'm grateful for all the updates i've been getting from the 20s tribe especially the telegram updates oh yeah yeah that's thank you miracle thank you i mean i've been seeing your presence seeing your feedback thank you so much and honestly i must say that if you're on 20s tribe and you don't receive our emails then i think you need to really go to 20s tribe.com slash join because if you receive our emails it can really change your week and change your month entirely right so i would advise you to make sure you are signed up to our mailing list make sure you receive our emails because i mean i'm sure you know mercy of 20 strive right <laughs> shout out to her she's always doing the most giving us amazing content every point every time <laughs> really appreciate that and all the back-end team that does all the content and sending amazing emails for us yeah um have you know why saying this is my first time and yesterday was was beyond beautiful honestly it was beautiful really really beautiful a Ame is saying, I found out about 20 Chab a few weeks ago, and I'm grateful to have discovered such a community. Oh, me so much to us. So good to have you, Ai. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please don't keep all the love, all the good things you are seeing in 20 Tribe. See the link on the on, on the screen. Make sure you join. Make sure you tell your friends to join. Stephanie is saying, This is my first time in 20 Tribe, and I must say that I'm thrilled already with the vision and the mission to go young ones to be to last which goes stephanie thank you for your feedback i mean we are really we are really happy to have you and i tr and trust me this is going to be the beginning of so many good things so many things we will build together and yes we are really building to last really changing our careers really making a difference really staying true to change our world our country and everything that we do yeah i think we have some other comment that is saying this is my first time yeah we turn this tribe I'm going nowhere again. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Delacro. So good to hear that. We're really excited. Well, you're not going anywhere. Thank you. Thank you for joining this tribe. Thank you. I'm really excited that you're here. I mean, we have a lot of first timers. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Yeah, I haven't seen the comments. Thank you so much, Delacro. I mean, of course, if it's your first time, you need to ensure that you're part of everything that we're doing. Sign up our mailing list, be part of our Telegram community. Right? It's going to be explosive. Guess what, guys? We have our first speaker in the house, and I'm so excited. Yeah. Super. Sure, <laughs> I was the who told you that. We are in the Wow, I was <laughs> like, David, are you sure? I mean, it was, it was <laughs> like, ah, because I know that when it comes to relationship, I mean, yeah. there are very few people that understand okay. and have practicalized it. So this is not even a theoretical speech or anything. This is practical how relationships have worked for him, how he has worked for his business and everything. So it was really amazing because I don't think there's any other person that can do justice to this, like this, exactly. like, 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 like Deborah Williams, honestly. And I was really excited to see that. Yeah, cool. Uh, so we're going to be bringing up shortly. Uh, just like Sean said, um, we, we thought we couldn't think of anyone better to bring in for this session. Um, on speaking on networking because we realize that a lot of young people i get questions every time when people meet me on the road or meet me and hang out and stuff like that why do you network i'm i'm, I'm an introvert i'm shy and all of that right and we realize you know young people there's really no way you can achieve your dreams or goals and aspiration or plan to the top of your career or even in your business if you don't network effectively right and we see someone who has done that over the years even as a young person he did that even of course, he's still young, but just above his twenties, and he's still doing that, still doing incredible work. And so we're so grateful to Mr. Debola Williams for accepting to speak. Uh, I'm sure that it's getting ready. I'd like to let the tech team know when, whenever it's ready. But we're going to be playing a short video before it comes on. But I'd like to know whether it's ready. And tech team, can you can you give me an indication if it's going to be ready? If it's ready, son. All right. I think that we 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 can go and just play the video and we'll come. 
Adebola Williams is the chairman of AW Network and co-founder of Red for Africa, the continent's largest portfolio of youth-focused media brands, including Red Media Africa. A pioneer at the intersection of media, democracy and social change, Adebola has been profiled by Forbes and CNN as the man who helped elect a trifecta of presidents in Africa, namely the current presidents of Nigeria, Ghana and Senegal. This led to the first book with his business partner, Chude, titled How to Win Elections in Africa. Beyond political advisory, Adebola advises leading banks, multinationals and international donors on their public image and storytelling strategy. A champion for youth in Africa, he co-founded the Future Awards Project in 2005, which remains the biggest youth awards on the continent with a training component that has empowered over 30 million young people. In 2010, he co-founded Enough is Enough, Nigeria's foremost civic participation platform and a premier voice for young people on politics. Adebola is a recipient of the CNBC Young Business Leader of the Year Award for West Africa and was named by Forbes as one of Africa's best entrepreneurs under 30. A social media sensation, he routinely engages a social media audience of over 360,000 people. He authored his second book, African Power Girls in 2021, a book he wrote as a gift to inspire his three goddaughters. In 2022, he was awarded the Outstanding African Business Leader Awards by African Leadership Magazine UK. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Adebola Williams to the 20s Summit. Adebola Williams is the chairman of AW Network and co-founder of Red for Africa, the continent's largest portfolio of youth-focused media brands, including Red Media Africa. A pioneer at the intersection of media, democracy and social change, Adebola has been profiled by Forbes and CNN as the man who helped elect a trifecta of presidents in Africa, namely the current presidents of Nigeria, Ghana and Senegal. This led to the first book with his business partner, Chude, titled How to Win Elections in Africa. Beyond political advisory, Adebola advises leading banks, multinationals and international donors on their public image and storytelling strategy. A champion for youth in Africa, he co-founded the Future Awards Project in 2005, which remains the biggest youth awards on the continent with a training component that has empowered over 30 million young people. In 2010, he co-founded Enough is Enough, Nigeria's foremost civic participation platform and a premier voice for young people on politics. Adebola is a recipient of the CNBC Young Business Leader of the Year Award for West Africa and was named by Forbes as one of Africa's best entrepreneurs under 30. A social media sensation, he routinely engages a social media audience of over 360,000 people. He authored his second book, African Power Girls in 2021, a book he wrote as a gift to inspire his three goddaughters. In 2022, he was awarded the Outstanding African Business Leader Awards by African Leadership Magazine UK. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Adebola Williams to the 20s Summit. Hi. Mr. Debola, is it there? Hi, good afternoon. I, actually, good evening. Good evening. It's so good to have you so much. Thank you very much. How was your day? Exhausting. <laughs> yeah, we had that. Thank you so much for doing this. We had that yeah. in the room. And thank you so much for doing this. So it's time to sure. just take a talk. Um, and after your session, we would have a Q&A with you. All right, excellent. It's great to be here with you guys uh, this early evening. Um, I've been asked to speak on building relationships, and um, I'm really hoping to do a very uh, short, short conversation. Uh, I've been on the road, uh, and I, I returned to Nigeria uh, about four o'clock yesterday, and I haven't stopped since I got in. I had actually forgotten uh, 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 that I had a, a speaking engagement until... Uh, I think yesterday or, or there about when he registered that, oh my goodness, you know, and I, and I had to begin to juggle uh, between all the commitments uh, to be able to join you guys. But I found it very important to, to come on and speak to you guys today, um, no matter how tight and almost impossible it was for me to be here, because the age that you're in is one of the most I would say it's the second most important season in your life. You see, there are three seasons in your life. There is the morning time, the afternoon time, and the evening time. And what you do in these three seasons depends or determines how you will lay to rest at the end of the day when your work is done here on this earth. But it must start in the morning time. Your morning time is your zero to about 23, 24 that for me would be the most important time in your life. 
you're single, you're young, you're free, you're restless, you have almost no fears at that age. The morning time is when to become. The morning time is to build the kinds of foundation that will sustain your afternoon and your evening time. The morning time and your afternoon time is when to stretch yourself and do very uncomfortable things that will be the foundation to su support the later part of your afternoon time and then your evening time. So your morning time is a 0 to 24. And your afternoon time is from your 24 to about 45, 50, if you want to push it. And your evening time begins at 50 onwards. Now, in your morning time is when you really have no cares, not too much cares. It's when you enter afternoon time, you're beginning to talk about Sakpa and adulthood, Nazca, because you've suddenly entered your afternoon time and you realize that all the free loading, free house, free food, someone sending you to school, someone caring for all of those are gone. And so coupled with trying to define a future for yourself, trying to harness your skill and your talent, trying to build wealth and make money, trying to build your person and be someone of relevance, you're also juggling with sustainers with the basic responsibilities that any human being needs in this community called life. And so why is the morning time important? Because you have less big things to worry about. So the time that you spend in that zero to 24, having the time of your life, partying, making friendships, some useful, some drawing you behind. The time you spend in your morning time, sometimes just holidaying and loafing around and saying, listen, I'm just enjoying myself because there is no pressure. I tell you today, my friends, that could probably be the most important time that you want to use in building the future. When I was nine, I got curious about my afternoon time and I spent a lot of my nine to 14 sitting at the feet of elders, soaking knowledge from uncles and aunties who were in their afternoon time and were in their evening time. So while I was in my morning time, I got a glimpse of what an afternoon time could look like. And I got a glimpse of what an evening time could look like. And then I sat down with the information I had and I began to decide what kind of afternoon do I want? What kind of evening do I want? From the privilege of sitting down to watch the lives of my uncles and aunties, to watch the lives of neighbors and you know celebrities on television, seeing what their afternoon was like and what the evening was like. The morning time is that time where you can get something you call in school, expo, about the future. And then you can choose. One of the most beautiful things about being able to build relationships and having access to different people is that it gives you an opportunity to decide on who you want to be. The opportunity to sit at the feet of several elders, to watch the afternoon time of several people and the evening time gives you what I call the power of Voltron. Some of you might be too young to know what Voltron is. <laughs> but if you know, and if you don't, Voltron used to be a cartoon we watched when we were younger of this group of rangers who had superpowers. And then when they all came together, they formed a huge superpower in one man. Now, access to relationships, access to people, it access to different afternoon times gives you an opportunity to pick different paths that form your own Voltron. And so you can be great, be powerful, have integrity, be smart, understand geopolitics at the same time, understand how to have a good time. You can learn integrity and honor, dedication and commitment and passion from watching people listen to their stories. 
And you must also remember that no one is perfect. And so in building relationships, you have to be aware that you will learn from people who you might see other parts of their lives that are not necessarily what you agree with. Let me quickly put that out there now. No one is perfect. The people you want to build relationships and learn from are not perfect. Some are better than the others. Some have a better grip of their emotions than others. And some don't. But do not rob yourself of the opportunity of learning because a part of your man's life is not what you agree with. And that's why, again, I speak about the power of Voltron. Look at people and pick the good parts of their life. And so if you make up yourself from the different good and different people, perhaps you will be an, a near excellent person. But do not throw away someone you can learn from because you say, oh, I don't agree with that part of their life. You don't need to agree with that part of their life. You don't even need to become friends with them because that part of their life that you agree with might be deep, deeply against the fundamental of who you are. But you can take a glean, you can glean and learn from the good parts of their life. Because the idea is that you know good from evil, so you can find good and form your Voltron. That's number one. Number two, creating great connections and relationships is an art built on intentionality. You must be intentional in building relationships. When I was younger, I understood clearly that for me to be able to be great in life, I needed wisdom and understanding. And so even though it can be most uncomfortable, it can be most inconvenient sometimes in building relationships, understanding the power of networks and understanding the power of access and information that you get that can change your life from being in proximity with someone or from hearing and learning something is always enough reason for me to push myself. So if you're on this call and you're thinking to yourself, I do not like building relationships. It is too difficult. I agree with you. It is an art built on intentionality and it can be very inconvenient. But you must think about it this way. For many good things that you've done in your life, they were inconvenient. Nothing good comes easy. Even going to school, there were subjects you did not like, but you had to pass them for you to be confirmed a graduate and certified a, a, a citizen who qualifies for a kind of job or a kind of career. So many times we do some things not because we love them, but because they certify our access to opportunities and to growth in life. And building relationships for some people is fun. For some of us, it's a chore. You have to lend yourself to your why. Simon Sinek, why? If you haven't watched it, write it down and watch it after this conversation. When you understand your why in life, it begins to help you ask the right questions and identify the right paths and channels, which ultimately begins to demand the right access and human beings are the keys for your access. So the first rule in making great connections is going there. As a little boy, I did not sit in my bedroom in my home and I imagined that I would learn about the potential afternoon time or evening time. I got up and I went to sit at the foot of elders. You must leave where you are to go to where the people you want to meet the people you want to connect with are. But that is after you have understood your why. And then when you understand your why, you begin to say, how do I get to my why? So it's why, how? What do I need for my why, actually? So it's why, what, how, who? Or even either way. But who comes last? So when you know your why, you begin to ask yourself, what do I need to be able to achieve this why? How do I achieve these things that I need? Who has them? 
when you grow later in life and you have even more clarity and you should be there by now in your 20s because in my 20s i had greater greater clarity on the people i needed to meet who or my who after answering my why what and how when you have clarity on your who you need to be able to at every point in time in your life have a list I call it stakeholder mapping. Please write that down. Stakeholder mapping. You must every year in January do your stakeholder mapping. Who are the people I need this year to be able to achieve my why? And then when you identify the who, you again ask yourself how. How is probably the most important question you want to ask in this life. How? How do I do this? How do I find this? How do I get there? How do I find these people I've written down in my stakeholder mapping? How do I engage them? How do I build a relationship with them? Then sometimes what will come back? What do I need to do? How? Okay, how is I need to go to that conference and find that man? What do I need to do? Get on a bus, get in an Uber and transport myself there. How is one of the most important questions that you must continue to ask yourself till the day you die. Once you find the how, you can identify the actions, the what, and you move. And so every year you should have your stakeholder map. When you have the state names of the people, write by their sides why you need each of them. Because some people are pieces of puzzles in your bigger picture. So this is the why that you're trying to achieve. And this for this number one why, there are five people that can help you achieve that number one why. So you write the five people down. Then you write what each of them is doing to contribute to that process, to that number one. So you have clarity. And then in the next line, you then move to, how do I find each of these persons? The next line, what do I need to do to find them? Or when I find them, what do I do to build a relationship? And every month, you go back and check that stakeholder map and check your progress. Identify the ones that are going well and identify the ones that you need to pivot or the ones that you need to change strategy. Something else you must realize is that access to one person is access to 10. Write that down. Access to one person is access to 10. So in your stakeholder mapping, for you to access some of the people you've written there, it would come from some relationships you already have. Sometimes it might not even be a relationship you already have, but one that you have just formed. But you must realize that for every one person you've met, there are potentially 10 of their kind. Listen carefully, 10 of their kind. So if you're friends with the CEO of a bank, you have potential to also be able to build relationships with 10 other bank CEOs. It will take time, it will take commitment, but you can because you become friends with one and that one potentially will be friends with at least three, four, five, four, up to 10 other CEOs, either of banks, or of corporations as big as that. And so in harnessing and building one relationship, you then access to at least three others out of your potential 10. But you must remember, to build relationships is inconvenient sometimes. You have to get up, you have to go. When I became 14, it was a tough time in my family life. My family had faced a very tough time between my five and eight. And by the time I was eight, we had lost almost, we had lost everything actually. I couldn't go to school. We couldn't pay school fees. And so between eight and 14 was some of the most difficult times in my life. But access to information, access to people gave me hope that I could be somebody. I lived in Sule. And you know, I have to point out quickly that sometimes many of you are looking for mentors. Many of you are looking for people to help you succeed. 
and you look out on social media, you look for the big, mighty, famous, and wealthy. The people that inspired me when I was young were my uncles and neighbors and people in Sule who I saw working hard day by day, trying to put one foot after the other, trying to build brick by brick. I saw their hustle. I saw their tenacity. I saw their gusto, their passion, their hunger. And that inspired me to want to succeed. And let me tell you something. I saw the ones who made money illegally. I sat with them. They were my neighborhood. They were my friends in the neighborhood, rather. I saw them. The ones who did all kinds of things. But I did not join them. I had access to information of good and evil. There were times I saw the evil... And I thought, oh my goodness, you mean if I join these guys, I could just overnight be like this? Ah! But maybe I should say God kept me. Maybe I should say the head of my mother kept me. But I think I had enough information at my disposal that I chose not to join them. And I chose to focus and be inspired by those who built with hard work. In actual fact, there were a few people who also built with hard work, but their hard work was also not legal. I saw them. And I was perceptive enough to pay attention. So I chose a different path. Two important things happened to me when I was younger. There was one day, I probably was maybe 15, I was taking a walk on my street. I remember clearly what I was wearing that day. I, I wore a sleeveless, one of my favorite tops. It was a sleeveless uh, white shirt with white, with green lines and a shorts. I think that was what I was wearing. And I was walking on the street that day. In those days, we used to do something called environmental every last Saturday of the month where we would all come out and clear the gutters clear the streets and keep, keep our environment clean. I miss those days. There was a sense of duty and a sense of pride in my community that it gave me that I feel like we have lost today in our communities in just keeping our environment tidy. And this was on a Friday. As I walked past this corner, I saw green grass. It had grown tall, green and beautiful. And I looked at it and I thought to myself, would be nice to actually, you know, just touch this, you know, play with this. It just looked very nice and green and beautiful. And then I heard a voice that said, by tomorrow, this grass will be no longer here because it is just weed. Even if tomorrow is not environmental, after a few days, this grass will turn brown and wither away. And then that voice asked me to look back. And on the side of that grass was a coconut tree that had been on that street since we moved there eight years before then. And since I got to that street, all of us had always gone on that tree to pluck coconut at certain times of the year. The voice said to me, you see, there are two ways you can build wealth in this life. You can build it so quickly and so fast and be like this green grass that withers and dries up in a couple of days. Or you can build over time, painstakingly, and be like this coconut tree that has fed you for over eight years of you coming to this street. Wow, that was a revelation for me. The second thing that happened to me was I had the privilege to continue to pay attention to this, my network in this neighborhood. And I saw that many of these, some of these uncles who were working hard, but illegally, before my very eyes, their wealth withered. And I saw a real testament of what I had heard or seen. I did, by then I couldn't say it was the Holy Spirit. Now I can see it was the Holy Spirit. But then I just thought, okay, all right, all right. I've seen this. Thank you. Bye. But now I know better that it was the Holy Spirit that showed me. 
And a few years after, he showed me the testament, the physical testament of it. These were my relationships. These were the first networks. Your first networks are the people around you. They are good. They are not so good. You need to decide. You need to watch and learn. Guess what I said to myself when I saw these uncles? I said, never will my afternoon time be like these uncles. I started this talk by telling you about three seasons in life, morning, afternoon, and evening. Because I paid attention and I sat at the feet of elders, of older people, I saw potential afternoon and potential evening. And I was able to decide in my morning time that my afternoon will not be like those people. So I began to make different decisions. And even in my networking and my relationships, that is why I am so clear that I can network with anyone and still make the right choices. Because I have built with the grace of God, my mother and those who I learned from a foundation that I can help me choose and know right from wrong. Relationships give you access. New experiences are locked in untapped relationships. Note that down. Relationships opens doors that sometimes money cannot open. Relationships puts you on tables that you almost thought weren't possible. All the big events, conferences, the big IPOs, the big contracts that people award are given by invitation sometimes. Sometimes it's public call, many times it's invitation. Invitation is by a person. And so in your 20s, spend your time building relationships that matter. In your 20s, spend your time in building relationships that can change your life. Sometimes people say, oh, building strategic relationships can look as though you are a social climber. First of all, don't argue with anyone that calls you a social climber. Tell them, thank you. And then go ahead and climb that social. Climb it deeply, wholly, climb it. And make value out of it. The world will always attack you. They will always try to define you. They will often insult you. Ignore them. Be focused on your why. And so, let me reference the Bible where it says, iron sharpened iron. May I ask you, is there a reason why you want to build relationship with an iron that is not sharp intentionally? Yes, you can build a relationship with an iron that is not sharp so that you can sharpen that iron. So what is then the problem in you also aspiring to relationships with ions that are sharper than you so that you can become sharper and become more successful? I don't keep friends with ions that don't sharpen me. For everyone who is my friend, and I have many of them, and quite a number of them who look up to me, who I am the iron that sharpens them. They are also sharpness to me. Sometimes they don't know, they don't think so, but they are sharpness to me. Every relationship, you must sharpen each other. Else, both of you become blunt and unuseful.
you must realize that not everyone will mentor you in your journey. Not everyone will mentor you. But you can watch them. Not everyone will mentor you, but you can watch them. Don't be too hung up, hung up on trying to befriend popular people or have them mentor you. They are sometimes fatigued with requests. You can watch their lives. You can read about them. Read their interviews. Watch their interviews. That's enough mentorship. You don't need to be in proximity with every mentor. Read their interviews, watch their interviews, watch their lives, watch their conduct. It's enough for you to learn from. Follow them. Read the books they read. Go to the conferences they speak at. You don't need to meet them sometimes. Just go and be blessed. Take it in and go and act on it. Many times we're too hung up in being in the room. We lose the essence and the value we can actually learn and act upon. Many times, we actually just want a picture. We want to tell people, oh, he is my friend. He is my mentor. I know him. I know her. That's not the prize. The prize is for you to be successful. I go out working hard every day. So that even my mentor is happy to call me a mentee. When you are invited onto a table, you don't just get complacent and stay there. You need to continue to work hard to be on other bigger tables so that those who have invited you to that one table are proud and grateful to have you on that one table. Well, many times you just want to be there. The picture is what you're looking for. That's not it. Sometimes you are, are you trying to accelerate a relationship ignorantly. You meet someone, oh, follow me back. Follow you for what? Why? What do you need to follow back for? You actually need the person to follow your life, to mentor you, to give you wisdom. Stop asking people, celebrities, oh, follow me, follow me on Instagram. Follow you for what? If they can't, that's fine. But don't make that the yardstick. What you should be looking for is access, real sustainable relationship with them. They can follow you and mute you and never see your post. Follow you and unmute you and follow you in a few days because people follow who they want to follow. You don't force people to follow you. You follow people you want to follow. So don't let Instagram and social media confuse the value you should be getting from relationships. One of the best things you can get from a relationship is when your friend or your mentor can recommend you and say, oh, I know Omoto Yosio Lassamse. He is good at one, two, three, four. I think you should hear him out or I think you should hire him. Olufunlala Olukoya is the best blah, blah, blah that I have met. That is when relationships is bringing value, but that is after you have shown yourself approved. That is after you've worked hard and that person has built the trust and faith in you and they can now vouch for you and recommend you. So you must build relationships, but your actions must also align with your prayer. Whatever you're praying for that has made you build that relationship, you must also show it. The people must see it so that they can now endorse it. Where there is no investment, there will be no return. You've got to invest in yourself. You've got to work hard so that the access you have built can convert to value. A network is not net worth if it doesn't convert to value, if it doesn't convert to wealth. Network is not net worth unless it can convert. They always say your network is your network. Yes, but you must be able to convert that network via value that you create that your network 
can help you promote and connect to opportunities so that you can build wealth. It is that wealth that becomes net worth. Your helper doesn't want to hear excuses. He wants to hear you working. For every of my mentors, you can ask them, they meet me working. And that is why they support me. They meet me working. I am relentless. I am hopelessly hopeful. I am passionate and committed. What are you showing to your mentors? What are you showing to your friends? What part of Stan's fashion do they know? What part of Anne or Edele do they know? Is it the one that parties? The ones that just want to do baby girl soft life? Or the committed one who has a purpose and a why that he or she is chasing? My people will say, You've got to know how to wash your hands. Washing your hands is understanding how to behave. Character. Got to have the kind of character that inspires even your mentors to invite you to tables and to rooms. What you shape out is what you, what has been modeled before you. So that's why you must keep yourself amongst people who can truly sharpen you so that your character can attract or can make mentors and potential networks open themselves onto you and bring you into their homes and give you opportunities. You have to practice gratitude in relationships. You must be grateful for the access that you have and the access you've been given. And you must also be grateful for even those ones who have turned their backs on you. Because you see, relationships must come in seasons. There are seasons where you meet people and there are seasons where you're not supposed to meet a certain kind of person. So there are different seasons to meet different people. Some people, you meet them when you're a seed. Some people, you meet them when you're sprouting. Some, you meet them when you're becoming a tree. And some, you meet them when you're a full tree and you're bringing fruit. They all have reasons and value to add to that season. Sometimes you meet someone you should meet when you're a tree. When you meet them, you meet someone when you're a seed that you should meet when you're a tree. They might not pay attention to you. Don't be upset. Don't hold it against them. They cannot see you right now. That is not the appointed time. There are people who will see you when you're a seed. But you see that person who saw you as a seed and ignored you? Leave them. Don't be angry. Don't have any sense of entitlement. They owe you nothing. But guess what? In a few years when you become a tree, the same person might be a helper to you. It has happened to me many times. There are many people I've tried to engage when I was younger who did not treat me well. Or some who just ignored me. And then today, some of them tell people, oh, that's my friend. And I don't go and say they are not my friends. I leave it. I'm thankful for whatever value we can both add to each other. And that comes my next point. Value. For every network and relationship you want to build, you must bring value to the table. What value are you bringing to the table? You must bring value. It is a two-way street. I have never felt poor in my life, even when I was doing 101, 010, where my family could not afford to feed properly. I have never felt poor in my life. For every relationship I built, I give of myself first. I believe in the law of sowing and reaping. So I sow first. And when I couldn't have money, when I couldn't afford to buy a gift, I will give up myself. I will serve. I will help. It, when I was younger, I became a jester. Because if you can make a man laugh, you can tell him to do anything, and you can get favors from any man. I used my skill as a talker and became a jester amongst my friends. And guess what? At a point in my life, I said, this season of being a jester is over. This next season, I will become a counselor to access relationships and network. 
Another season, I said, okay, this season, it is about gifting. What kind of gifting? I picked the kind of gifting I wanted to give. So at every point in time, I always had something to give. And I think the best years of my life was when I gave of my hard work myself. I served people with my bare hands, carried stuff, washed stuff, did things for people to sow. People always say, oh, is it not transactional? Wouldn't it look somehow if you give? I, I never gave them because I was waiting for one particular thing. I was just grateful for being in their presence. I was grateful for their access. I was grateful for their wisdom. And even if you want something from someone, isn't it more honorable to give first before you receive? Isn't it more fulfilling, joyful? In your 20s, some of you or many of you have no wife, no kids. This is the time to give of yourself to mentors, to networks. And please give of yourself. I mean, in terms of support, in terms of just, you know, helping out, service, sacrifice. Not anything that goes against your integrity. Not anything that goes against your value as a human being. Please. It's got to be within your value. It's got to be. Now, I'll give you a few tips on how to build relationships. One, I said earlier, know your why, do your stakeholder mapping, write down how you're going to find them, what you need to do. Two, begin to go to where they are. If you want to build a relationship with someone directly, they're speaking somewhere, go there. So follow them and watch where they go. Know them through their social media, through their Instagram, through LinkedIn, through their interviews, if it's a popular person. When you walk into rooms, after you've left your home to go there, pay attention to the people in the room. Sometimes you've gone to a conference because you want to meet one person. Take the brochure of the conference and read about all the speakers. There might be other people that can, you can find useful. Immediately they come off the stage, walk up to them and greet them. But before you do that, prepare yourself with information by what? Quickly read their interviews while you're there. Quickly go on their social media while you're there. Check on their LinkedIn. Pick up something that can be a conversation starter from their social media or from the speech that they have delivered. If it's someone you followed for a while, then you must have picked a few things from them that you can talk about when you meet. If it's someone that is coming right up the stage, refer to their speech and find a connection between what they've said and what you do. If it is someone that has not spoken, that's when you go on the internet to research about them. So I'll take it again. If someone is coming off stage who you want to connect with, connect what they've said, pick some key lessons and connect it to what you're doing to create a conversation. If it's someone that you miss their speech or haven't spoken, but they are speakers at the event and you want to connect with them, go on their page. Instagram, LinkedIn, Google their name, find their interviews, find a common conversation, a common theme, and engage them on that issue. And if it's someone you follow for a long time and you see in that room, by now I assume that you must know a thing or two about them. Don't sell immediately. Focus on listening to them, on understanding and hearing them, and find an opportunity to probably then maybe just say who you are. When you're meeting people, do not be too shy or too ashamed. Meet people with a level of courage and boldness. Not with pride, but confidence. Introduce yourself with your full names. Hi, my name is Adebola Williams. Every time I do that, people always wonder, who is he? Because I say my two names. People are used to people saying one name. The two names make them pay attention to you. It's just something about it. Introduce yourself with confidence. And this is what I do. Compliment people. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid to compliment people. People love to be complimented. Even Jesus says, praise me to get access to things. 
worship me by being obedient. God, one of the biggest things he likes is worship. And all of us are mini gods because he created us to be like him. We are never him. We can be him, but we have traits just like our father. Praise them. Compliment their shoes. Compliment their shirts. Help people at parties, at conferences. If someone wants a drink, if you're talking to someone, offer them a drink. If you're trying to do something, help them. You're trying to take a picture, get the camera, help them take the picture. Give compliments, help quickly by little things, and then connect. Be well-versed in different conversations and topics. Particularly when you're going to a space where you know the theme. You're going to an oil and gas conference. Please be well-versed in some things in oil and gas. Not everything, just a few. So that you can have conversations. A good networker always has an idea in many things. Always has an idea of many things. Read voraciously so that you can give information based on what you've read. So read books, understand, know things. When you do that, you're able to have conversations. Networking is about conversations. Conversations that turn to relationships. Work hard so that you're also a person of worth. Work hard so that you're also a person of worth who people want to pay attention to. Exchange details with people right there. Don't be afraid or ashamed to ask for people's numbers. Ask for their email addresses. And don't be too intrusive. If they say, talk to my PA, with joy, take their PA's number and keep in touch. There is something called the five-time rule. Sometimes you have to meet someone five times before they know you. So don't be upset that, oh, I've met this person three times, also remember me. And some people who meet a lot of people, you might need to meet them longer. But also ask yourself, every time you meet them, do you leave an impression that is unforgettable? Don't be tired of introducing yourself to people over and over again. I never got tired. I always did it. And you know what I used to do? I would ask one of, you know, there's a time I asked the governor, sir, do, do, do you really know me? He said, no, you know. I said, sir, what's my name? I asked him. This was the governor. This was in 2011. I asked him and he said my name and I felt good. And from that day, I did believe he knew me. So I, when next I met him, I did not, I was under too much pressure. I was not introducing myself as someone who didn't know anymore. It's important to also know how your relationships are progressing. So the moment I knew he knew my name, when next I saw him, we spoke about deeper things. I took the relationship to another level. But if I didn't think that he knew me then, I would still be behaving like an outsider. So there is something I call brand audit. You must always audit your brand. You must always be sure where you stand with people at different times. <laughs> and I did that with him. And because I did that with him, it helped me move that relationship to another level. And so... Don't be afraid to ask after a while someone you've met for three, five times if they know you, if you still think they don't know you yet, so that you can progress on the relationship. Um, is my time up? Because I can see that you guys are back. Thank you so much. It's time for Q and Issa. We just have a few questions. I we have okay. our, our next panel in the building. Show sure, our session. Thank you so much, Mr. Devola. It was incredible. I like all the, how you talk about networking and the value and how you transfer. Transition from network into networks, and that was very pivotal for us as young people. So, how was it for you, though? I mean, it was very instructive. I really liked where you spoke about stakeholders mapping because many times we want to meet people, but you've not really written it down, you've not really visioned it, you don't even know how to even meet them. You don't even you just sit down and say, Ah, this person, maybe send them DM, but you've not gone to the event, you've not even read about them, you don't even know what they do, you don't even know the book that they've written, you literally don't know anything about them. But I like what he has said and about knowing them getting to meet them do your stakeholders mapping i mean even be confident of yourself and even have value and i think that was that was really really amazing yeah absolutely. yes so let's take some questions um from 
on the comments um, because we already have our next panel during to go. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Devola. I'm waiting for the yeah, Thank you so much, sir. I think we'll just take some few questions while we wait for the um, for the audience with their questions. All right. So I'd, I'd like to ask a question of my, my own. Mr. Devola, are you there? I'm here with you. All, all right. So you talked about relationships extensively today, and thank you very much. I'd like to also ask particularly, especially as regards building things with, with friends, right? You have built Red Media with your good friends over the years. How has that happened? How did you get into that, starting that business with him and growing that business and ensuring that he has not resulted into any fights and you have maintained that relationship in such a way that is mutually and everybody's excited about that? Um, so first, first off, I've always enjoyed a good partnership. And all my life, I have built businesses with people. My first attempt at entrepreneurship was when I was nine years old. And I had a small farmland. And my niece, you know, my cousin, uh, male and female, had another farmland by each other. And I said to them, I want to go, yeah, you want to go, whatever you want to go. Why don't we merge the two land, the two pieces of land together so that we can have a share of everything? So in this land, we will grow yam, we will grow corn in season, we will grow vegetables, and at any point in time, we will then all share. That was my first partnership when I was nine years old. So if we break that down, first, it's identifying what you have and identifying if you can get a bigger share or more options if you partner with somebody else. I had a half piece of land. They had half piece of land. In that my land, I could only grow probably one thing. And I thought I would have the opportunity of more if I partnered. So one, you must have something. Two, you must identify, you know, uh, 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 you, you must have something. You must identify what value you're looking for in the partnership. Because without clarity, there'll be confusion. And along the line, there'll be this resentment. And after a while, there'll be a breakup. My second business was with my friend, Emilia God rest her soul. Be an initiative. We also said this, we also identified the value we're bringing to the table. And then it became myself, Emilia and Chude, and then myself and Chude. So at every point in time, I've been in a partnership. And it's always been about value. You must bring value to the table and your partner must also bring value to the table. It's merging values that helps sustain partnership. If at long the line, someone feels like they're bringing value and the other is not bringing value, be patient. The tide will turn. And that's why it's a partnership. So when the tide turns, the other person might bring more value than you do. But if it goes on for too long, then it becomes a problem. So it will be, it'll be a season where one will scale to the other but you must ensure that it balances back. You're in a partnership to carry each other, to share ideas, you know, to, for you to be, to be bigger. That's why you're in a partnership. If you think that the partnership you're in you're, is limiting you, then you need to, you know, cut away from that partnership. So for me, it was simply about value. But I'll tell you something interesting about meeting today. And when I spoke earlier about iron sharpening iron, I met today on the set of Inside Out with Agatha. And there was a topic we were arguing on, and we were both in the audience, but we had opposing views. I argued passionately, he argued passionately. Opposing views almost felt like we shared different values because we had opposing views on that matter. But immediately the show was over. Guess the one person in the room I wanted to be friends with that day? Today. I thought this guy matched me point for point, energy for energy. I need to learn from this guy. I need to know this guy. Even though we argued on opposing sides, it didn't stop me. I was actually more curious to know what goes on in the mind of this person. And that's how I became friends because I saw a, an, a, a sharp iron and I went as another sharp iron so that we could sharpen each other and be better. And that's the foundation of any partnership. You must have clear value, come together and at every point in time be able to bring value. The other thing I must say before I, I, I give it back to you is partnership is like marriage. Patience, humility, kindness, empathy,
communication are key ingredients to make it succeed. Over wow. to you. Thank you so much. I mean, that was really, really instructive. I really like I really like your response to that. I mean, just shows that just like a marriage, right? Building a business with somebody. And um, thank you for that. So we'll just take the question from Tengu Tokbo on the screen and another question. So the question says, in relationships, are there any differences between using people and maintaining networks? Or should we keep relationships for the value we can get from them alone? Or can, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. I had to turn off my camera just to save them. Um, 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 some. So, um, um, maintaining relationships is just as if it's just just the way you have friends you know just the way you have friends you must maintain networks it's just as you have friends the beauty is that you can have friends in the right network so your friends in a network where you're getting value in a network where you're getting recommendations and access to opportunities and at the same time you're being a kind empathetic caring listening supportive friend but also getting value you know i struggle with this using people terminology that people always say all the time i really struggle with it and that's why for me maybe the reason why i give first is what makes you sleep well at night i give first knowing that if i get any value from this and sometimes i don't because it is not everywhere you sow that you will reap from. You will reap. It just might not be from that same place. Mm. And so I give first so that even if I get, I sleep well at night knowing that I'm also adding value. Anybody who feels that they are using people, they are not adding value to the relationship. That's why you feel like you're using people. If you're adding value to your relationship, you will not feel like you're using the, you're using the people. So if you're here, and your building relationships, focus on adding value first. Mm. Thank you so much. That, that was really amazing. And um, before we let you go, we'll just ask you, we'll just ask for your final words. And we really liked the way you spoke about morning, afternoon, and evening time for us in 20s. So what's your final word to people in their 20s? Because we have thousands of 20s in our community. What's your final word to them in building relationship and having success in their career and building to last? Uh, one second. My final words in building relationships is be grateful. That's the final word I'm going to say to you guys. Be grateful for every access that you have. Be grateful for every opportunity. I am grateful for everything and everyone that I've come in contact with. The doors that were shut before me and the people who spoke to me harshly. Those who showered me with love and those who invited me to tables. I never go about with any sense of entitlement for anything that I've gotten. I'm grateful for Nigeria, for all the problems that Nigeria has thrown at me that I have solved in some cases that have given me opportunities. I tell people, I say, my life would not be like this if Nigeria was not where it was. Nigeria mm -hmm. gave me problems. I tried to solve them and it made me a person. What problems are you solving? So for everything that people complain about Nigeria, I see reasons to be grateful. I am not delusional and I behave as if there are no challenges, but I wake up every day ready to face that challenge. When you wake up every morning, it is not a sense of entitlement that you will not run into traffic or there will not be electricity problems. Just be ready because tools are never the problem. A determined and disciplined and knowledgeable person will always stay hungry and always succeed. So my friends, be a grateful person, soak yourself in knowledge and try to solve the problems that Nigeria throws at you. Let your helpers meet you working because no one is coming to solve you. It's coming to, it's coming to save you, no one. No one will take you through the journey on their backs except they see that you're working. People will carry you from one point to the other, but they must find you working. And you also must remember to carry people on your backs when it is time for you to help other people. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
guys, please let's just appreciate Mr. Debola Williams. Thank you for thank you for your final words. Thank you for telling us to be grateful, telling us to make sure that we're working when our offers come. Thank you so much, sir. Adi. Yeah, and Adim Valu, we are really grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's gonna be good to have you. All right, so Sean's next session. I'm super excited. Yesterday we had power sessions, panel session, we had Dr. Obi. And today we are Dibola, and guess what? The, the next panel, we tag the next panel, the mentors panel. These are people who have at least 20 years of experience in whatever they have done. All right, so we're so grateful to have them. Uh, so I'd like you to bring up the uh, moderator and so that we can just. Yeah, so we're introducing our moderator for this particular panel. Her name is Precious. So the bio will be coming up in a few seconds, and we'll introduce her, and she will anchor the session. Yeah, so Precious is an Precious, Precious is an entrepreneur, humanitarian, public speaker, coach, and writer. In the field of business, Precious currently runs DigiTribe, a digital marketing agency. She also runs Renver Fashion House, a fashion and image consultancy outfit. She's also the founder and lead volunteer of the Stella Initiative. She's a recipient of multiple awards, including the 25 out 25 award for e-commerce. Wow. The Ideation Orb Award for Social Innovation, the Humanitarian Award and D and K Somi and excellent humanitarian service by the Royal Monarch of the Asian City of Ileife. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our moderator for today. Welcome, Precious. Welcome, Precious. So good to have you. So good to have you. I'm even thinking, I think you are one of our speakers because I can see your bio 25 125. Welcome, Precious. So Hi guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, so good to see so you. nice to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, it means a lot. And I totally enjoyed um, Adebola Williams' session. You know, he was talking yes. about always being grateful and in the spirit of being grateful. Thank you so much, um, 20 Strive, for having me. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so without wasting much of your time, Thank you. Thank you so much, Stans. Thank you, Belo. Thank you, Precious. Thank you, Chirima. Um, so kindly let me know where you're chatting from um, before we take this to the next level. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alamide. Thank you, Chioma. It's so good to be here. Um, thank you for the warm welcome. So without wasting much of our time, I'm super excited to be inviting our panelists. And the first person on my list is Omani Oboli. Omani is a producer and a director, actress and scriptwriter. She's a multilingual French language graduate from the University of Benin, who has produced and directed several groundbreaking Nollywood movies. She has won several awards in recognition of her work and impact, including Sisterhood Award Film and TV Director of the Year at the Ebony Life TV, Producer of the Year for Wives on Strike at the 2017 Awesome Treasures Foundation Award. She's also a 2018 Archbishop Desmond Tutu Leadership Fellow, the founder of Omoni Oboli Foundation, which is an NGO for the less privileged women and children in this society. And I must add, she runs the Omoni Club, Omoni Community, which has been changing lives and has been super impactful. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You look so beautiful as usual. It's so good to have you. So good to have you. Next on my list is Niyi Adenobi, co-founder, executive director of VFD Bank. Niyi Adenobi is the executive director, governance, government, and subsidiary relations, a financier and an investor with over 15 years of experience in the institutional banking, investment management, and consulting sectors. He has played financial advisory roles to numerous firms in Nigeria and in the United Kingdom, most notably with the Royal Bank of Scotland and ATOS Consulting. He serves on the board of several companies with total valuation in excess of $2 billion. He's an Harvard Business School alumni of the Owner President Management Program. It's so good to have you. Please let's make welcome Niyi Adenubi. Niyi Adenubi. Next on my list is Abubakar Suleiman, MD CEO, Sterling Bank. Um, please, can we? Abubakar is an economist and a banker with over 20 years' experience in consulting and financial services. He's the CEO of Sterling Bank 
Before his current role as CEO, he served as an executive director and chief finance officer of the bank and was the executive sponsor of the bank's non-interest banking business, Sterling Alternative Finance. He currently serves on the governing council of the Chartered Institute of Bankers, of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, and the advisory board of Lagos Business School, Enterprise Development Center of the Pan-Atlantic University and the Bantu Blockchain Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Abu Bakar Suleiman, it's so good to have you. It's so good to have you. I'm super excited. This lineup is going to blow your mind. And last on my list is Funke Buckner, founder, CEO of Sapphire Event. Funke is an entrepreneur and a lawyer. She's the founder and CEO of Sapphire Event and is regarded as one of Nigeria's pioneering event planners. She also created the Sapphire Training Set. Academy that has birthed over 500 professionals, author of the Essential Bridal Handbook, a first of its kind wedding resource for the African market. She has planned and organized several high profile events within and outside Nigeria and has won awards and recognition, including being featured in CNN's Inside Africa, the Future Award for Entrepreneur of the Year 2006 the Wedding Planner Magazine Award for Wedding Planning of the Year 2007, Go-To-Girl Life Achievement 2011, Nigeria Event Award for Outstanding Contribution to the Event Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome the panel, the panel, the strong, powerful, amazing panelists to this um, session. This is day two. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, to building to last. I totally love this topic. And my first question goes to Abu Bakr. Um, so we, we know that you've said somewhere that um, if you were not a banker, you'll probably be a poet, right? Um, so how then, and <laughs> oh, oh, money is surprised. You'll probably be a poet, you know, and you were, I think your parents stopped you from actually pursuing poetry. So how then do you balance your passion and your professional career? How, how has the journey been so far? Well, I, I, I realized very quickly that poetry wasn't going to be how I would feed my family. So that became my <laughs> passion. And I think it was still required to, to take care of yourself and your family. But, but on a serious note, um, I think people think about poetry and they think about the output. You know, you produce a body of work and that was what people see. But I think it's beyond that. I think... Um, art and poetry in particular is about how you view the world. It's about how your mind works. It's about, you know, effectively what is projected back to you when you look into the world. And that determines the kind of human being you become. So I don't think that being a banker has necessarily stopped me from living out my life in the way that I would have if I was a poet. I probably have just interacted with people differently. Rather than sit down and produce a body of work from my reflection and my experience, um, I'm trying to live the same experience through being at work, working with people, building something that mm. I hope at the end of the day will uh, come out like a body of work that can be enjoyed, uh, apart from the fact that it serves people. Just building something that has impact and that can um, kind of um, bring out the same kind of emotion that you get from a good body of work, which is a lot of a sense of satisfaction, um, a, a sense of community, um, and something obviously that transcend uh, whatever we do today. Okay, okay, great. But but do you still practice poetry? Do you still do poetry by the side okay. maybe once in a while? Oh yeah. So well, I still consume a lot of uh, poetic work. I still, obviously, as an amateur, I would write once in a while, not often enough. Um, mm. But I think deep down, my perspective of the world is still very poetic. I still see the beauty in everyday things. Um, uh, Deborah William talked about how he is grateful for Nigeria despite all of the challenges. Yeah. My view of Nigeria is to be able to look at all of the broken pieces and see the beauty in all of it and how to put that together to make something out of it. So Nigeria may be broken, but it forms a very good raw material or input for producing something else that is actually more beautiful than the original work itself. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Um, please realize very early what puts food on your table, right? Um, <laughs> like Dangote, I'm not sure he's passionate about cement, you know. <laughs> so it's easy to, to, you know, just, you can, from what he said, we can actually merge both. You know, make money first, then you, you can have money to follow your passion. Well, don't follow passion first, actually. Um, oh, money, oh, money. So this question is for you. For one who had been, been um, who had had a very humble beginning, did your background play any role in helping you build a lasting success in your niche? Well, first of all, um, let me say thank you to the organizers of this event. David, thank you so much for the impact that you're um, creating in our younger generation. We're all young, right? So they're just younger. <laughs> so um, I'm really grateful and I'm thankful to be here. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. You know, a lot of people see me today and they're thinking, oh, you know, her parents probably had money. You know, she comes from some sort of pedigree. I don't even know if I had a spoon, to be honest. I was born into, well, my parents got separated when I was really little. I was a baby, pretty much. And my mom obviously had to move with two little girls. So she was um, a single parent of two very young girls. And we stayed in a face me, I face you apartment. You know, I didn't know that's what it was. It's much later in life that I realized, oh my gosh, I actually grew up in a face me, I face you. You know, so wow. it, it, I, I, I say that to say, you know, a lot of people look at themselves and they think, you know, my situation, my circumstances and all of that, you know, how am I ever going to get out of what I've put myself in how am I, or where I found myself pretty much, you know? So, because at the end of the day, it is not what happens to you that defines you. It is what you make out of it, right? So from a very, very, very young age, I wanted to be successful. I've always wanted to be successful. I still want to be successful because I don't even think I am halfway where I'm going yet, right? So the, as luck would have it, or let me say God decided to, you know, shine on us. My mom got a job then at Delta Steel Company in Orion Lodge. I don't know, some, some of the older people here would know it. Now it's gone to shit. But then it was, it was amazing. But she was a teacher. And as you know, all teachers have their place in their reward in heaven, right? So, yeah. which means that you actually don't get money on earth. So we always had a lot of month left when the money was done, right? So from that young age, my mom taught us how to hustle, so to speak, because mm -hmm. she had so many different things to make ends meet. So she had a teaching job as a day job, but every morning I woke up at 4 a.m. because we had to make pastries to sell, right? So we'll make pastries, pack them up, and people will literally have to come grab these pastries to go sell. And then when we get back from school, we have to fry granuts, bottle them, wash the bottles, do all of those things, the, uh, people will come again to take those ones to go sell. And then my mom will go to what they call cold room back in the day, where, mm -hmm. it's where you go to buy frozen stuff, right? And she will buy those bags of fish and all of those things, everything mixed up together. And we have to separate them, clean them up, bag them up nicely, and she'll take them to supermarkets. And at weekends, we had a farm. We'll go to the farm, right? So I've never been one to shy away from hard work. The truth really is that at the end of the day, this, we say work hard, work smart, but hard work pays. It really yeah. does, right? But that kind of um, positioned me for who I am today or what I do today. You know, as a filmmaker, it's very hard work. People see the glitz and the glam and think, oh my gosh, you guys have it going on. This is so pretty. You guys look so nice. The work behind the scenes is very, very hard. When I'm in the process of making a film, right, especially if it's my personal project I'm directing and producing that movie, I, I barely get three, four hours sleep every single night. So I'm pretty much working sometimes 18 hour days and all of that, but I don't shy away from hard work because of my background, because of the upbringing that I got as a child. I, I mean, I could have decided, you know what, life is too hard, business is hard, everything is hard because it was hard. No child wants to wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah. It was hard. I would cry sometimes, right? Because it was difficult. But I could have decided that, you know what, 
life is just hard. Business is hard. Everything is hard. You know, I'm just going to just do one little thing, get some little job somewhere and just be content with that. Right. However, if I wanted to make a difference, if I wanted to be heard, if I wanted to be seen, then I needed to take another path. Then I needed to look at hard work as this is what is going to get me to where I want to go and not shy away from it. I say that to say, you know what? Sometimes we're dealt cards that are not very favorable. Right. So mm -hmm. well, what do we do with those cards, though? You know how the same one life gives you lemons? You make lemonade? You really, you re we all really have it in us to turn our life around. We do. It doesn't matter what your situation and circumstance is today. You can wake up on, on any given day and decide, today is the day that I turn my life around. You know, and you just go on that path. So really, yeah, my, my upbringing did help a lot in, you know, making me who I am today. Okay, so I saw a comment that was so hilarious. Gems Productions, she said, or he said, um, wow, this woman really hustled from the trenches. So, oh, money. <laughs> so, oh, money, do you want to share some life lessons from the trenches? Just a few life lessons you learned from the trenches. Well, to be honest, <laughs> I love that. I never saw myself as a trenches person. However, <laughs> indeed, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I was. So um, again, hard work pays is one of the lessons. Um, the only people who really don't make it are the people who quit. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. If you keep going, just keep going. It doesn't matter. So the, the thing is, a lot of people want to get the prize at the beginning. It doesn't work that way. You work and then you get the prize. Mm -hmm. You don't get the prize from the start. Right? So you're thinking, you know what, let me just make some money first and now, then I'll work hard. How does that work? It doesn't work, mm -hmm. right? You put in the work and then the money comes at the end of the day. But let's not forget that the journey is so important. My journey taught me a lot of stuff. My journey taught me resilience. My journey taught me never to give up, even in the face of great tribulation and trouble. But I learned from going through all of that, that you know what? I will never quit. Mm. It doesn't matter what my current situation or circumstance is. I will never quit. Because at the end of the day, as Nigerians say, last, 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 now who quit, now I lose who. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm. really, the truth is, it taught me resilience. It taught me to work hard. It taught me never to quit. And it taught me that at the end of the day, the person who stays the course gets the prize. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. I hope you are taking notes. Please drop it in the comment section. Um, don't quit hard work pays. Um, work first, then wait for your reward, you know. Um, thank you so much for those amazing lessons. So we come to Ni Adenubi. Um, decision making is a very critical ingredient in building anything to last. What are the values that have consistently shaped and influenced your decision-making skill? Uh, thank you very much, Precious. Uh, uh, good evening to all the panelists. And thank you to the organizers of this beautiful event for, for inviting me. Um, I want to encourage you to keep doing it. When I was in my mid-20s, I was looking for platforms like this, uh, but there was none at the time. So thank God for technology and we thank God for Nigeria's younger people for always uh, coming up with stuff like this. I think it's brilliant. Um, I think to be a leader or to be an executive, uh, decision making is all that you do actually, well, most of what you do. So it's about judgment, right? Um, the things that you need to do is to make clear what your values are, the things that you won't compromise on, things like integrity, being trustworthy, uh, hard work, uh, those things are the key things that decide, help you decipher uh, how you want to make your decisions. Um, uh, also, decision making is based on instance, right? So there are some things that are strategic. You need to think about them very carefully. You need to be very focused about that decision. But there's some things that are tactical. You're already in the field. You try something. It's your best option at the time. If it doesn't work, you change your mind very quickly. You have to remain flexible. So I think that strategically, there's a way that you need to create your decision-making process, which is that a lot of thoughts, a lot of strategy, you take your time, a lot of deliberation. 
But also tactically is that once you've made those strategic decisions and you're in the ring, you just have to use your intuition and let it guide you. If it's the wrong decision, don't be afraid to change it and change it very quickly. Okay. Um, but is it safe to say as a, an executive, as a leader of some sort, it's, it's okay to have voices, you know, to listen to voices of, you know, you're leading a team and you have people say, oh, um, Mr. Nii, I don't think you should do it this way. Or I think you should, you know, is it is it safe or you just have to be firm and say, okay, this is the way and we go, and we go that way? I think not only is this safe, I think it's absolutely necessary. So the whole of last week, uh, I spent the bulk of my time going through uh, classes of emotional intelligence. Uh, we had somebody come to the organization and talk to all the leaders in the organization about how to lead effectively from an emotional uh, intelligence perspective. And the idea is when you're a leader, you have to listen to everyone. You don't have to do what everyone tells you to do, but you have to have a room that is collaborative that people are sharing their ideas, and people feel like their ideas are being heard, but ultimately uh, the leader makes the call, makes the judgment, but it needs to be done in the way that everybody must feel like they've been carried along and they've been listened to. Okay, thank you very much. I hope we're taking notes. Um, I can see funny, funny comments here. Namumu, they give up. <laughs> that is hilarious, you know. Um, okay, now to Habubaka. At the start of your career in finance, did you know you were going to become a CEO? And how were you able to position yourself for this fit? Okay, so I, I, I mean, I could give you the, you know, political answer and tell you I always had aspiration and all of that. <laughs> um, in all honesty, there's never been a time when the role of a CEO was an aspiration for me. I've never, ever imagined. I didn't think it was a necessary thing for me to do uh, to get to where I wanted to be. What I always wanted to do was to help define an organization and what it does and how it does good. Um, and in, in the process, obviously, to be respected and to be paid. But mm -hmm. very early in my life, I understood that it was far more important to me that I have influence that I, because I didn't like a lot of what I saw around me. Um, so CEO was never on my radar, um, but now that I have the mic, I, it's something I need to say about building to last. Um, and it was sort of notes that I made ahead of this conversation, which is someone looks at a beautiful house and he wants you to talk about building to last. Mm. I want to look at a builder and ask myself if I have actually, if I have built a builder to last. Because it's the people that build organizations and build infrastructure and build whatever it is we want to build. We spend too much time on the outcome. We don't spend enough time thinking about how we make individuals um, effectively resilient. Um, the kind of experience that Omoni has shared, I have similar experiences. Mm -hmm. I would say that um, uh, at some level, I almost felt connected to what she was saying because I lost my dad when I was very young. My mom didn't have, hadn't had a job for a long time and had to take care of us. And it felt the same thing. And she talked about making stuff that has to be sold. We went to school and we came back and we tried to contribute economically to the family. It, a lot of us like that. And in many cases, it was seen as suffering, right? But for a lot of us, that was the school. That was the real school we went to. It was a school that taught us empathy. It was a school that taught us how to yeah. collaborate. It was a school yeah. that taught us about not to be afraid because you've been there, you've been down, you've been up. It's, it's just another position. One of my favorite things that I say to people is that I would be a very happy person as a headmaster in a village. Therefore, you can't threaten me with anything. There are a lot of jobs for headmasters in villages. So don't think you can threaten me with anything, right? So I sort of broke it down to say the individual, you need to find your intellectual heft. You need to find the thing that helps you is your anchor. It's not about something complex, a PhD. It is something simple, but you're so good at it. But that is your point of reference. Right? That thing is important. It helps you understand even the areas that you don't understand. Because once you know what it is like to be very good at something, you can almost tell when somebody is trying to bluff. Right? Just the fact that you know that every single aspect of life has a lot. I mean, when he was talking about what it takes to make a movie and all of that, that I experienced means that even a lawyer cannot bluff with her. 
because you will know that that cannot be a very good lawyer if this is the amount of you know commitment you give to your job right you also have to think about how you build your social network to last right your relationship with your family and your relationship with your close ones you've got to have them if you don't have those relationships that are built to last, you yourself, you're not going to be available to build anything to last. You're yeah. dealing with one crisis after the other. You've got to find a way. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. You can have two, three, four friends that are built to last because those are the things that you anchor yourself on when you are down and when you are up. When you are down, they will lift you. When you are up, they will hold you down so that you don't float away and start to think that you are, you are everything. Um, obviously, I think at a deeper level, we have to have a culture that is also built to last. You cannot be hopping from one understanding of the world to the other. Our culture is our lens. You've got to have one that helps you remain constant and say, this is how I view the world. And finally, you've got as a person to be fiscally built to last. You're not going to build anything to last if you're not yourself fit. You've got to build yourself to last. So rather than tell you how to build a castle or a company, or a political party to last, I'll tell you that start by building yourself to be unbreakable, right? Take your experience. If you're lucky and you come from a loving family that has given you everything, think of how you convert that into some level of resilience. If you are unlucky and you come from a more difficult background, convert that to some form of resilience. If you're a resilient person, you're going to build something to last. Wow, wow resilience, build something to last and find your anchor. That was what did it for me. Find your anchor, find your anchor. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Abubakar. So this question is for Omoni. Have you had to deal with any major failure or rejection that almost made you give up? And how did you manage it? <laughs> okay, so we've all had to deal with stuff that was major, right? Um, would I say that it almost made me give up? No, because I, I absolutely do not have a give up mentality. I don't. I, I, just, I just do not. Right from early on, I've always known that, you know, I would lose if I quit. So I never give up. Right. However, I've had major challenges that shook me to my core. Right. Um, one of which is my movie, Okafor's Law. I don't know if anyone here yeah. heard this movie mm -hmm. you know, I, it's, it, Till today, I still think about it. I, actually, I thought about it a few days ago. And I thought to myself, how is it that you do something and someone wants to claim that thing and mm. they think that they're right? Because I had to think that they actually think they're right because if they didn't think they were right, they won't take me to court. They won't do all of the things that they did. Mm. So imagine going for the premiere of your film. I'm all, I'm all glammed up, you know. I, as a matter of fact, that's the part of the business that I hate the most, but people don't know that because I do it with so much grace. You know, I'm all glammed up and I'm going for my premiere. I have a wardrobe man function on the way. So I, I go to the dressmaker. Her place was like maybe 15 minutes from the premiere location. Yeah. So I go to her to fix the wardrobe man function. While I'm with her, my um, EA at the time calls me and says, we just got served. I'm like, I don't understand. She's like, we just got served. I said, what do you mean we got served? Served what? <laughs> She's like, we can't go on with the premiere. Like, people are already at the venue. Everything is done. That was the biggest premiere of my life. As a matter of fact, Funke Bokno, who's meant to be here, mm -hmm. was the organizer of the event. I had never used an event planner before for any premiere. I just do it myself you know my team and i this time we're like you know this is groundbreaking this is a movie that went to toronto international film festival let's show them okay so we, we were all set up to give this amazing premiere and then i'm like oh my gosh what are we gonna do while i was thinking that the distributor calls they also got yeah. served. so guess what now we cannot go on with the premiere so i call my lawyer and I'm like, oh, um, we got served. This is it, this is that. My lawyer is a son, so you know how arrogant they can, they can be. He's like, go and do your premiere. Tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll figure out what's, what to do. I'm like, um, sir, you don't understand. He actually says we, we can't do anything. We need to shut everything down. Not even anything that has Okafor's law written on it must wow. not be played. <sighs> so now Funke is confused, right? Because I'm like, Funke, this is it. So they, they had to start taking down everything. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? Like people are at the premiere venue. Now they ha we had we had a we had a lineup that was just insane. It was supposed to be like the tallest, the longest, whatever before mm. other people up things, you know. So I'm like, sir, don't you understand this? He's like, oh, money, I'm I'm telling you, go ahead with your premiere. Tomorrow we'll figure it out. <sighs> but guess what? I'm, I wasn't the only one that was served. My distributors were served as well. And they were like, nope. We're not going to go ahead with anything. It was even their venue, as a matter of fact. They're like, we're not going ahead with anything. We're not going to do this, right? Oh, my gosh. I had to go to that premiere, smile with everyone. I was dying inside, smile with everyone, and then get into the hall for the movie to start. And I have to announce that, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to show the film today because we just got served, right? This, this was being televised. Don't you understand? Like it was, it was being said. People were watching in London, in New York. Wow. <laughs> and, like, and at that point, I started crying because I'm human, right? At that point, I started mm -hmm. crying. And, you know, the news just spread, you know, social media age, of course, the news spread immediately. And it was just a big thing. And all the in issues, everything was a mess. The next day, of course, my lawyer, we are all sitting down and all that. And then, you know, we go to court. We win the first battle, which, which says we said we could actually go ahead and show the film. So we didn't have a premiere, but we, but we were able to show the film, right? And that battle went on for such a long time. Four <laughs> days after that premiere, uh, my friend walks into my house and he's like, what happened? So what do you mean? He's like, You're half your size. You are half your size. Like, you know, even first fat to start with. <laughs> and now you're half. So which means you're really all bones and a big head. What is going on? Right? I'm like, yeah, this is, this is, and I'm like, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to die. Nobody's going to die. What, no matter what happens, you will still be here. You will still be making films. I remember the video of you crying. You'll still be making films. At the end of the day, it's just one project. It's just one project. Let's say you don't even get to show this film and everything just goes to whatever. You're still going to be here. You're still going to be making films. This is probably going to be, you're going to remember this as one of your least films, right? The truth is, at the end of the day, just never have that give up mentality. Even when you're going through things, because we're going to go through is the way life was created. You're either going through something right now, yeah. coming out of something, or you're about to go through something. That is the way life is. Nobody said it was going to be easy, but it will be worth it. It will be worth it if you just keep going and never give up. Guess what, guys? You heard it here first. There's talks right now about something to do with Okafor's law that's going to be major, major. But this is a project that brought me so much grief, yeah. so much pain. Guys, I've never had that much pain before in my professional career. You don't understand. It was almost an international embarrassment. It not almost, it was an international embarrassment. Like people, people that don't even know me concluded that I'm a thief, intellectual property theft. For my own film, a gateway me why ride by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go down to my roots. Do you know how painful that is? You know, when you actually do something and you're being accused, mm, it's, it's embarrassing, but it's not painful because you know, so you do one. But when you're being accused for something that you didn't do, it's like, where do these people come from, right? However, just know that no matter what it is that you're going through right now, it will all, my friend says, it will all come out in the wash. Don't worry. Just, it's, it's time. You know when they say time heals all wounds? It's not just a cute saying. It's yeah. true. Because yeah. when I think about Okafor's law now, I don't feel how I felt then. Then if, I, if you just say Okafor's law, I'm going straight to the toilet. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. That's why I lost so much weight in four days. Just, just mention Okafor's law. My stomach, my system just gets messed up. I have to go straight to the toilet. But I don't feel that way anymore. So I mentioned Okafor's law now. I'm actually excited. I'm actually excited when I talk about it. This is just a few years down the line. Well, look at it. When I was going through it then, it felt like the world was coming to an end. But here I am today, right? So again, just don't never have that thought that, you know what, this thing is too much, I'm going to give up. Just never have it.
Okay, so you kept mentioning your friend came over, your friend saw you, your friend this, your friend that. So what, what is the place of, of having quality friendships? Why building to last? Quality friendships, why building to last? So you know when the Bible said in the beginning, um, man was not meant to be alone. It was not a romantic relationship. It didn't have anything to do with the fact that Adam was a man and Eve was a woman. We are built for community. The way that God created us, we're not meant to be alone, right? So there is a place for cultivating um, good friendships. There is a place for cultivating great relationships. People, you know, Mr. Bubaka rightfully said, people who hold you down, because more will not lie, success gets to your head. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Remember in the Bible, when um, Solomon would go to fight all these wars and all of that, right? And then he's coming back. He's in his chariot and people are chanting. Oh, I'm sorry, David. People are chanting, uh, Saul slayed 1,000. David is 10,000. That old boy's head is swelling. I can. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Yeah. Yes. If, you, if, you, if you're a student of the Bible and you study other books and stuff, there was always someone that was beside Solomon by his ears. Oh, beside David, or any of the kings, by his ears, I would say, remember that you are just a man. Rem that's all, that's the person's job. He just keeps saying it so he can hear it. Remember that you're just a man. Remember that you're just a man because you can see they, if they catch, if they catch somebody. Ha, <laughs> hey, celebrated filmmaker. You don't understand. Yeah. What can you tell me? that? We didn't enter person's head. Right, so you need people that can say hello and calm down, calm down, calm down. Just, we know, we know, we are celebrating. Well, we said we are celebrating you, however, <laughs> don't forget who you are, don't forget where you're coming from. So, yes, there's a place for applause, we all applaud you, however, remember that you're just the same as everyone else. So, you have my children keep me grounded, but then say, Mom, I want rice. Hey, hello. Who is the star in this house? There's no star. We'll go and cook the rice. That's what I'm saying. So you need people that will do that for you. You mm. need people that will cheer you on. You need people that will lift you up when your spirits are down. So there is a place for cultivating great friendships. And this is the time that you do that. Because guess what? When you, when you have massive success, now you can't tell why they're coming anymore. Now you don't know why they want to be your mm -hmm. friend. Mm -hmm. Because some people are just there for the glory now. But now, in your 20s, when you're still trying to figure out stuff and, you know, getting the success little by little, this is when you create those friendships. Because these are the friendships that will last. I still have certain friends that, yes, we don't talk every day, but I know that if I call them, they will cut me down to size. And <laughs> you need those kind of people sometimes, you know, so... Yes, it's, it's, it, fr the role of friendship is very important. I'm a, I'm a great advocate for, you know, having good friends around you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, but before we continue, I think um, Funke Buckner just came in. I'm not sure because our video is off. Um, can we read our profile, please? Hi, uh, good evening. Good evening, uh, good evening. Oh my God, I've you're in traffic? <laughs> I've been in traffic for four hours. Wow. I, I'm sorry, honestly, I've been in traffic for four hours. I went to see my daughter. She's in boarding wow. house and I have been in traffic. Like I'm on the road, like it's really bad. It's terrible. So I'm so sorry. Wow. That's why I couldn't join. I had mm -hmm. um, uh, network issues on, on the Express and I also just couldn't join but i just said you know what let me just even you know I, i'm i'm committed to this and i didn't want to seem like i just didn't do it so i'm just here i, I have to turn off my video because i'm in traffic it's really bad i can't even i don't want people to be looking into my um into the car yeah but i'm i'm here i'm here so if i can talk without my camera i don't mind but i just wanted to say and good evening to everyone well amazing good evening. I'm listening to everything Amazing, I'm so, amazing. so sorry you are going through so much. Yes, there as well. <laughs> thank you, thank okay. you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry. Okay, so we can we can just excuse her. Are we? Is she excused? 
Yes, so sorry. I, I think so, yes. She's not in the <laughs> mental you. for, for your grueling questions. Yeah, <laughs> but she's resilient. We are talking about resilience. Exactly. <laughs> can we can we ask just one question? Just one. Okay, ask me one, 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 one. <laughs> Okay, you studied law and became an entrepreneur. What shaped this decision? And what has helped you build a lasting success and stayed relevant? Because I've, as long as I remember, I can I keep hearing Funke Bokno. For a long time, I didn't even know who Funke Bokno is, but that name kept ringing everywhere. So how have you stayed relevant in the event industry for years? Okay, thank you. Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> I think, um, really, for me, I studied law, um, but I didn't want to study law. If you understand, what I mean, if you understand it, in twenty-five years ago, thirty years ago, our generation we had to were compelled to study professional courses. So we had to do what our parents seemingly wanted, and there were not many options at that time. So I studied law, but I knew that law wasn't what I wanted to do. And I, um, I had a passion for organizing events, planning, creating memories, helping people take the stress of their weddings. And at that time, my friends were getting married. So that's how I went into the industry. And while I was in the industry, I realized that there was more to it. I could develop it better. I could um, build the business. I could add structure. I mean, I went into the business. I was very young. Maybe I was younger than about 20. Maybe I would, be, I would say I was 24, 23. I was young. So I didn't even understand anything about business, but I got people that guided me, taught me. Um, I went, you know, and as much as possible, I kept on learning, self-development, kept on learning, realizing that, look, you know what, I'm building a business um, for the future. It's not just for me. You know, at the beginning, when you build a business, you really don't even know, maybe for, for people now, it's easy. But at that time, you know, which is 20 years ago, it was, I was just, I was just a naive young girl. But I realized that I needed to build something that would last. And that was how I was able to keep on pushing it. Um, kept on, of course, reworking the strategies, reworking, you know, our goals, making sure. And then, you know, you, you talk about how are we staying, staying relevant. So it was basically, I would say, about reinvention, about commitment, resilience. I mean, these are buzz. I know that it seems like buzzwords, but these are things that I have lived by because um, I always say to people that when you when you when you are tenacious, when you are when you 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 bounce back after every seemingly every failure, every setback or challenge, <laughs> you are strong. Do you understand? So yeah. really, it's that um, it's, it's things like that. You know, so I've, having to stay ahead of the game, having to reinvent. You know, even reinvent myself. You know, as a as a as a person, apart from even reinventing in the business, but just constantly just ensuring i mean i've been doing this 20 years when we started we were pioneers imagine you're a pioneer then you are dealing you're in an industry that has a very low barrier entry what do you do do you understand you just have to ensure that you keep on building you said we started having other companies uh we have different companies that do different things you know so just to make sure that we are we're ahead and and that's it so really i i would say that that's probably um what has helped you know and um yeah thank you okay um one one word that has reoccurred is resilience please hold it with your left hand though hold it with your left hand um thank uh, you so I, much um Precious, I'm but may add to, the, to the resilience uh, conversation mm. uh so it's one thing to be resilient to uh not let the issue break you and not to give up right but like omani said um, it's another thing to use that same setback, turn it around, and use that to be actually your great story and your comeback story, so to speak. And that's usually what the greats do. If you look at people like Steve Jobs uh, and so many other great leaders in the world, is the very setback that they had that they turn around that actually takes them from being just good leaders to great leaders that we'll never forget. So it, it, resilience, but also taking that thing that nearly broke you and turning it around and making it the story of your greatness is also quite important. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much um, to your question. You lead one of the biggest investment group in Africa, no doubt. 
how can young entrepreneurs with fantastic ideas, business models, but with financial struggles, position themselves and their brand for investment? Because the truth is, in 2022, I don't know of another person, but Sakpa is actually real. It's a real thing, right? It has gone from being a slang to being a real thing. So how can young people with bright ideas, you know, innovations and all of that, but have small struggle, financial struggle, position themselves for investment? Uh, that's a fantastic question. So the first question you asked me, you asked me about decision making and how do yeah. leaders do it. But I'll also take it to the level of where you're starting out a business and you're trying to build your, your company and stuff like that. I would say you should also listen to advice. Uh, Sakwa is a thing. Uh, <laughs> money, can be, <laughs> money can be tight. Yeah. Um, usually, you know, if you've been to school or if you've worked in places, you probably have colleagues that have done some work in uh, being analysts and stuff like that. They can help you package together your business model and your deck, as we call it. Uh, because you need to do that. You need to have a proof of concept, or at least have thought through the idea, and then put it in a form that you can present it to investors. That has to be the minimum you need to do for it to get across to, to people like myself to take a look at it. Um, you have to have thought about what you want to do. You have to have thought about the industry. You have to have thought about what you're bringing to the table in the industry. Uh, like uh, Funke said, when she started her business, which is a low barrier business, there were pace setters, there was nobody in the industry. And I'm sure at the time, if she had gone to people and say, I want to be an event planner, come and invest in my business, I'm sure across board, the answer would have been no, 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 no. But over time, uh, everyone has built the skill to package the business, the business today, we are begging her to invest in our business today, uh, you know, because it's now we've seen that they can bring structure to the business. You can bring a lot of uh, uh, governance into the business. That's another thing you have to do. You have to show how the business is going to be governed. No, uh, we support entrepreneurs, but we also want to know that the entrepreneur has people around them that are bringing balance. So we want to see the management team. We want to see a strong management team. Uh, you don't have to start out with a board of advisors or board of, uh, a board of directors, but it would be good to start seeing the path to, to that as well. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, but do we have, because I've, I've heard cases where, oh, I have a fantastic idea. I want to, I have a pitch deck. You know, I have a strong team. And you go meet investors and they're like, oh, have you done your pilot? What are the numbers? You know, have you tested this product and all of that? And you skipped that in this conversation. Well, you know, it, it all depends. It, it all depends on the industry, the sector. It depends on the vibe of the entrepreneur as well. Uh, like Abu Bakr said earlier as well, you know when someone is bluffing, you know at what stage uh, the person is at, you know how much homework they've done, all those things come across. Um, it's not every time that you need a proof of concept, right? But you need people to have thought rigorously about what they're bringing. You don't want to ask two or three questions and all of a sudden the entrepreneur is confused or stammering and not knowing the answer and stuff like that. So there's no case in point that, you know, that's cast in stone. Uh, it's just that when you're uh, preparing for those uh, sessions, please be well prepared Make sure that you've really thought about everything that you're about to, you know, do and say. And, and yeah, and most times, because most times we're looking for people to support, to be honest with you. The capital is there. We're looking to deploy it. So it's not because of the shortage of capital. Um, we're also invested in LPs that are doing the same thing. They have the mandate to invest in 20 businesses a year. But most times there's a challenge with the quality of the pitches that we see vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, what we're able to do. Okay. Thank you. I, I hope somebody's taking note. Tech bro in the making. Tech sis and tech bros. Um, so this next question is for Abu Bakr. How did you know when a particular phase ended for you? And when did you decide to move on to another line of discovery? Uh, well, I guess there is one particular instance that um, I guess is what sharing. I remember... Um, 
sitting down with some older older friend of mine actually um, was, uh, was a supervisor at that point uh, and he spoke about how um, someone else was talking about me and he used the phrase um, Abu Treasury oh, wow. uh, and for some reason it was like a lightning bolt it was like somebody struck me right it was mm -hmm. that was the point I realized that I was done that the last thing I wanted to do was for all of my identity to be defined by the work that I did in Treasury. I took a decision on that day that I was going to start to pull myself away from the Treasury work that I did. And it was in a good light. It was someone who thought I was good at the job and wanted to steal me. And he fought back and said, you can't steal my person, right? But I got this sense that this is me about to be pigeonholed. And that if I didn't move at that point, I could, it could define the rest of my life. Because people then don't accept that you can be good at anything else as well as you're good at this one. And, they, you know, so sometimes you just have to pay attention. The things that may sound like um, proof of success, right, um, validation may actually be information for you to think about your next place. Because if you're doing so well at something, then maybe it's time to also start to think about what you will do next, right? Um, I also had the same feeling when I first left the, when I left the last international bank that I worked for. Um, but that one was a trigger that was more of a nationalistic trigger. I was enjoying the job. I love my colleagues. They're still my best friends till today. But the company was an international company, had had a problem somewhere in South America, and suddenly the things being done in Nigeria were, to my mind, anti-Nigeria, if you will. It didn't make sense for something to happen in Argentina. And suddenly you were making decisions in Nigeria that was preventing the company from growing in Nigeria. And so I figured I could not continue here because unless earning a salary was my ultimate goal, I needed to be somewhere where I could actually build something. And so I left. So again, what triggers you is up to you. It could be something uh, that is more broader, like a nationalistic instinct that I want to build my country. Or it could be something that is more personal, like, well, I don't want to be pitching hole into something, right? So um, it's really going to be you listening more. And my last comment on that is I have this principle that the riskiest time in your life is when everything is going well, yeah. right? I get really, I sit up a lot when everything seems to be going well. Something is about to go wrong. I think that is the equivalent of uh, Omani's um, all glammed up and ready to, to, to rock that. Um, <laughs> so that's the moment you think to yourself, what could go wrong? So a very good friend of mine, I, I like to think of him as my anchor. Um, people think we're brothers. Um, we always sit down to say, what's that? Where is that risk going to come from? Something is coming left field. Why are we having such a good time? Why are we you know, we're laughing for two hours? Something is about to go wrong. And we start to think about all the things that can go wrong. So maybe, maybe again, that's when you know a particular face is worth looking into. OK. Um, but so some people will think that when you are excited and you start to think that things will go wrong, that's you being a pessimist and all of that so but when do you really draw the line between you know being the bearer of bad news you know always pessimistic and saying oh i think i should check this thing when success is coming or when i'm happy to actually knowing and listening in on that voice to say you know what it's time to move take your mm -hmm. things and move to the mm -hmm. next level well i um First of all, I'm actually an optimist, so I'm like a ridiculous optimist. Uh, I'm unable to see the idea, the sense, sense that something might not work, right? Every single, it's just my gift and my curse, and, and I'm okay with that. So I would say that um, when, when do you know when to move on? I have a principle that everywhere I am, I want to be underpaid. Right, I want to be giving more than what I'm paid for. Yeah. That's the only way you grow, right? If you're in a space where you are overpaid, you are protecting that job. You're doing everything you can to protect the job. When you're in a place where you're underpaid, you are free to act your conscience, to act your conviction, to commit yourself. So when I find myself in a place where I think what I'm being paid is less than what I can contribute, either I contribute more or I think I no longer belong in this space. So as a constant, I want to be able to look back and like, yeah, nobody can do this job for the amount that I'm doing it. Or nobody can do it this well for what I'm paid for it. P 
period. That that's my that's my own compass. Mm. That's my driver as well. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. So moving fast, we move to Omoni. After marriage, you took a break and returned into the movie space. You realized there was no space for you in the industry. The rest is there was no space for you in the industry, and you carved out a niche for yourself. Um, the rest is history, as you've had several award-winning movies under your belt, including the Okafor's Law. <laughs> what is your driving force? <laughs> okay, so um, I think one of the things that I got very early on in life, I think um, having lived the life that I lived with my mom and all of that, I, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. That's one, right? And And I mean, shout out to people who um, have a day job. It's fantastic, you know. However, I wanted to be an entrepreneur, right? So when I came back, when I got married, we moved to the UK for a bit. I had I'd had all my kids. We came back. We came back with no money, pretty much, right? And then I got a job. I studied um, foreign languages in, in uni. I majored in French. So I got a, a job with Total. It was called Tota Fina Elf at the time. I think they just merged. So I got a job with them. Um, I went. For, I remember going for the interview. I did the exam. I passed. I remember going for the interview, and I just my heart was just beating so fast. I was just thinking to myself, "You are literally about to throw your life away. You know that this is not what you want to do." But we needed the money, you see. Whew, so it was. It was very tough. I went back home that day, having been interviewed by. I think three of the top people, all three of them wanted me to, you know, take the job. And I went back home and I said to my husband, I'm so scared. I feel like I am about to throw my life away. And then he said to me, I would rather have a happy wife than a rich wife. And that was all that I needed to move, you know. So I turned down the job and my in-laws could not understand who turns down a job in an oil company in Nigeria? Like, are you mental? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they didn't understand. However, I knew that that was not my path. It was clear to me as night and day. I'm not saying go quit your job or turn down a job offer, right? Mm -hmm. Some of us would need to actually work day jobs while we're working mm -hmm. on our dreams. But I just knew that what, the dream that I had did not have the space to work a day job. You cannot try to be an actor or a filmmaker and have a day job. It's almost impossible. You're, you're not going to succeed, right? But there are some people who would be able to work day jobs and also build their dreams at the same time. Please go for that option. It's, it's the less risky option. It's the option that puts food on the table, right? So please, I always say to people, use that option. However, I couldn't. I didn't have that option. It was this or this. So I had to choose the one that I, I thought would make me happy, right? So I, I started, I went back to, you know, try to get into the film industry. And for real, there was no space. Every, nobody wanted a new girl. Yeah. Nobody, all the girls were established. They had the Genevieve's and the Omotolas and even the Iniedos and all of those people. They were just there and there was literally no space. I was trying to get in and it was just, you can't come in, you can't come in, you can't come in from every angle. I was just getting pushed back. Yes. Right. So, um, but I kept, I kept at it. I kept trying. I kept trying. I kept trying. I got one or two roles here and there. But then I, I got to a point where I realized, you know what? I'm going to have to create my own table. Nobody wants to give me a proper seat at the table. I have to create my own table. So I hustled. I, got, I went to New York Film Academy in New York. I took a short course in digital filmmaking. I came back and I was like, let's go. Now I'm going to make my films. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> after that. I still they talk about film where I won't shoot, I never shoot any film. And I didn't know that time was going. I didn't know. I was still trying, yeah, acting in people's movies here and there, doing little things. One day I was talking with a friend and I said, you know, there's this film that I want to shoot, you know, amazing project. And he's like, oh, is that not the same film you told me about four years ago? I said, I don't understand. <laughs> me. I told you about this project four years ago. He said, yes. <laughs> and that was when it hit me that I had been talking for four years years and i still had no me it was four years after i had gone to film school i had made one film so i made a decision that day that come rain or shine hook or crook don't use crook i will make this film right 
So I started putting everything together. Script was ready. I started calling up, you know, um, people that were going to be in the film and putting all these things together. Packed all the money in the house. Plus children's accounts. Emptied everything. I'm like, we're making this film. If it doesn't work, we're going to the village. However, we're making <laughs> You know, but then the, the most amazing thing happened when I finally was ready to make the film at whatever cost, no matter what, everything started to align. It's incredible because at this point, my mindset was I'm going to make this film. I went back and started talking to people I'd spoken to four years ago, brands that I said, you know, what, come partner with me to do this. And they were all just, you know, how you guys do now, Mr. Bubaka, and you know, you know well, I'm not supposed to do. They were all just, you know, all just like, around. You know, the turning around things. But as God would have it, everything started to align. I started making that film with not enough money to complete it. And then instead of me to make a small, cute, romantic comedy that will shoot in three locations and go home, I went out of my way again, wanted to make a big film. That was how we, the film was set in three places. In Lagos, Ekiti, and Asaba. I carried cast and crew with big, big trailer and vehicles where they go from one place to the other shooting film. I did not have money to finish this film, or you people should not forget. I started it with not enough money to finish it. But by the time we're finishing the film, everything had aligned so beautifully. I had enough money for post-production. I completed the film and had money for post-production because I decided that I was going to make the film no matter what. If, so at some point in your life, you're going to have to make a decision. It might be a tough decision, but you're going to have to make it and you're going to stick with it. The truth is time and chance happens for everyone. Yeah. But you have to be in the game. If you're not in the game, even when the time and the chance comes, it's not gonna happen for you because you're not even in the game. Right. So once I decided, you know what, I'm in the game, it, it worked out perfectly. And I was able to make my first film, being Mrs. Elliot. And what did I do? I, I made the money from that film. I didn't say, OK, now let's go and buy a car. It's uh, we, are, we have not made money. Love, love, lifestyle. Yeah, hey, hey, exhaust, spend, spend something. So, mm, bam, bam, bam. I didn't do that. I took the money from that first film and made another film. That's what I did. So that's how I started my career as a filmmaker. So I just kept rolling over my money. I would take the money from this one, make another film, take the money from this one, make another film. That's how I started as a filmmaker and I was able to make film after film after film after film. The truth is we need to get to the point where we realize as young people that you are actually the money. People are trying to make money. You are the money, don't you see? All you have to do is find something that brings value. That's it. Anything you can do, anything you can give to solve a problem is value. That's it. And money is a value. So when you have something that solves a problem, money gravitates towards you. That's it. You are the money. We need to, once, once, you, once you know that, sometimes, you know, I say to myself, I wish I knew certain things when I was in my 20s, ah, don't go there for the land walk. <laughs> I'll dozen. I'm off a billion. <laughs> you understand? I yeah. wish I, the things that I know now, I wish I knew them then. So you guys are at a very great place in your life where you can really position, where you know certain things and you latch onto them and you just go through life with those. See, there are principles. The principles work 100% of the time regardless of your circumstance, your situation, your color, your race, whatever, they work. But just as some of us, we didn't have this. We didn't have all of this growing up. So there's certain things that we didn't get to know because they don't teach them in, you know, in, in schools. They don't, they don't, nobody sat us down in any, any class in university and taught us what we're learning here today. Nobody did that, right? We were just taught whatever it is, your course or whatever it is that you're learning. We didn't have all of this, right? So once you realize that, you know what? I am the money. You're earning money now. You're doing whatever it is that you're doing and you're earning some money. Are you actually saving? I know someone is going to say Sakba is in the land. Listen, 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 listen. No matter how little you earn, you must keep a portion of it aside. You must save. You will not die. You think that you will die, but you will not die. 
even if it's 10% of that money that you're taking every month or every week or every, however it is that you're paid and you're putting it aside as savings, you won't die. When the savings get up to a point where you can invest in something, you take it and you invest. But the rule is that you never lose money. So watch your investments very carefully. Don't go and follow them to do the one that they will say they will give you 50%. It's not they will. It's not they will. <laughs> Nobody can give you 50% returns on anything. Don't listen to them. You understand? You, when, you're, when you're going to invest the money that you've worked hard for and you've saved, the rule of thumb is that you never lose money. So you must make sure that you're looking at it and you're looking at it and you're looking at it. If you don't understand it, walk away. Don't invest in anything you don't understand. Research it properly. Get to understand what you're investing in. Then you can invest right but you're, if you're earning money in any way shape or form make sure that you're saving a portion of that money and you're investing that's how you start to grow a nest egg that's how you start to get a portfolio right don't wait till oh you know what now because i never really to get money like that so don't worry once i become a millionaire i'll start saving i'll start mm -hmm. investing. when you become a millionaire you will not invest you will go and buy a car because Damn. you didn't even cultivate that habit from when you were not earning a lot right so yeah it's just my two cents okay so from from what i picked um when you wanted to shoot be mrs elliot you didn't do the small three location movie and all of that so how then do we um what's what's the thin line between starting small and actually saying oh this is the dream i have because as young people we just want to hit that very big thing you know just want to go big and they will tell you is either you go big or you go home or go hard or go home so what's the thing like between starting small and actually starting big like starting hitting it hard don't listen when to do them. you know <laughs> go big don't they go big or go home see go hard or go home that's more like it don't mm. go big or, if you cannot go big go small start start the most important thing is to actually start and stop talking talk is cheap everybody can talk you're talking about this thing that you want to do. You're the, you'll be, you just wake up one day, you're like me, you've been talking for four years. And you realize I still haven't done anything, right? I, I mean, the truth is, I, I, I saw that I could go big. However, if I didn't see that I could go big, I would have done a cute little film. The most important thing is to actually do. Stop talking. People keep trying. That's why they don't do. You know, there's this thing I'm trying to, you, know, you are not, you won't do it because you're trying, actually just yeah. do it, right? So it doesn't matter um, how you start. The most important thing is to actually start. That's the most important thing. So maybe you, maybe you have a day job, but you have this passion, right? That or you have this thing that you feel like you can create, or you have this business that you want to start. You want to write an ebook. You want to do e-commerce. You want to do this, or you want to do that. Work your day job from nine to five. Work your business from five to 10, right? Just start however you can, no matter how small, just start. Okay, just start. Somebody says, stop talking, talk is cheap. Your saliva go dry. You know, anybody can talk. The most important thing is to start. Please let your saliva not dry. Just start any which way. You know, we have the money bags here. Mr. Abubaka is here. Mr. Nii is here. Don't worry. Investment day, we are covered. Mr. Nii, no I'm eyeing you. We need to just talk. start. We ha see, we have the investment. We don't need. I'm to ready for you. Deck. We don't need to drop each deck. We're in twenty tribe. So yeah, just bring out your ideas, and we go hard or go home. Thank you so much, all money. Uh, Mr. Nii, I think this is our last round of questions. So, Mr. Nii, we have a lot of tech bros, a lot of startup CEOs. So you meet somebody and you say, oh, where do you work? Oh, yeah, I run, I run a startup. You know, I'm a co-founder at one startup or the other. Um, so what would you say is the fate of an average African youth in building a long-lasting business, even in the face of the present-day capitalist dilemma? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Okay, so what would you say is the fate, is the fate of an average African youth in building a long-lasting business, even in the face of the present-day capitalist dilemma. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I think the prospects are extremely, extremely, extremely great. I, I think um, 
there's no better place for a young person to be today than in Africa. Mm -hmm. There's so many problems that need solution. And historically, what our fathers and our grandfathers did was that they went to school in England or America or Russia, and they came back and copied and pasted what they learned there. It's the first time in uh, the history of our country that so many people are bringing out solutions that tackle specifically our problems. Being African, payment solutions, uh, healthcare solution, education solution. So as long as you're original, as long as you're authentic, as long as you're uh, really solving a problem and not copying and pasting, um, Africa and Nigeria especially is the place to be. Um, we're invested in a company called Piggy Vest. Um, it doesn't take a rocket scientist and you don't have to talk to them for one hour for you to know that the solution that they were coming up with six, seven years ago was going to solve people's problems. They didn't you know, start out with big money. They didn't start out with a background in finance. But they knew from their own personal experience that there was a problem with saving for young people. And they created a product and a platform that they themselves would use. And in a short space of time, they got 100,000 users. In uh, a few years, they have 4 million users, right? Very sizable. So um, I think the prospects are incredibly bright. I think people should have the confidence to, uh, to dream, to build, uh, to start, like we've been saying. Uh, there will always be setbacks, be resilient. Uh, in some cases, use your resilience or that same problem as the catalyst for your greatness. Uh, VFD story is not so far off. We started out with 14.2 million naira, like seven guys, very tiny money if you want to be an investment company. But we just ground it out, and we, that's what we did. Today, the balance sheet is in excess of 100 billion, and we're just starting. Um, so I, I would encourage every young person that's listening here today or that gets to see this later to please take the chance. Africa is great. Uh, don't look at the headlines in the news alone and think everything is sakba or jackba. Uh, there are great opportunities here. Just be authentic. Look at the problems. Come up with a real solution. And uh, the sky is the limit. Okay. Um, you've heard it. Don't look at Jackpa and Sakpa together, you know. Just start, just start and be resilient. This has been an amazing session. So um, you can start sending in your questions, start sending in your questions. But before that, I will just take one last question, and this is directed to everybody on this call. Um, so what is that one thing you would tell your younger self, you know, from a place where you stand now at the moment? So what would you tell when you see um, the younger Omani, the younger Abu Bakr, the younger Nii? What's that one thing that you would like to say to your younger self? Omani wants to so, go first. No, yes. Mr. Bubaka, go first. <laughs> <laughs> that was a setup. You're supposed to fall for that. <laughs> well, was... it's International Men's Day, so yes, Mr. Bubaka. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yes. Happy yes, International yes. Men's Day to Thank everyone. You. Happy Men's Day. So it's one word, audacity. Wow. Be more audacious. Everything that I've done now, I feel like I've always had it in me, a lot of the impute to do this, to do what I'm doing now. But somehow I think I waited for my turn. So to my younger self, um, skip the queue, start another queue, or like oh, money, build your own table. Um, you know, just honestly, you are capable of far more than you think you are it's just a fact and i know it's difficult when you are you know in sakwa mode um and when there's so much negative and i must sort of lean on Nia's comment there's so much negativity over 15 years ago i stopped reading the daily newspapers because it doesn't tell me anything about possibilities about a future it mm. tells me nothing yeah. i can work with it just tells me what doesn't work. So I stopped reading it completely. And I started to envision the future for myself. And I'm pursuing that. So to my younger self and to the 20s here, believe me, whatever you think you're thinking of doing, you are capable of doing much more. Mm -hmm. Just so much more. 
Okay. You are capable of doing much more. Be audacious. Thank you so much, Mr. Abubakar. Mr. Nii, to you. It's really uh, it's National Women's Day. If the woman is the more finishing last, but uh, um, it's the same, very similar. I'd say to my younger self, uh, believe in yourself. Uh, you can do it. Um, uh, people who have achieved greatness are not better than you. They don't know more than you. They are not better educated than you. They don't have better intellect than you do. They don't have more energy than you do. So just believe in yourself. Walk into the room. If there are no chairs on the table, grab a chair, sit down. You belong in that room. You belong to be a part of whatever thing that your mind can uh, conceive. So that's it. Okay. Oh, money. Wow. Wow. First no of all, pressure. I, <laughs> first of all, I just really want to say I'm actually really grateful to be here today. You know, um, this wasn't just for the twenties. You should be grateful to be here today because this has been an amazing session. I've learned a lot from this thing, from this session. Um, I'm I'm a student. I'm a I'm a forever student. I'm constantly learning. Like my notes are always full. So even while everyone's speaking, I was taking notes. Right. Um, so please, one thing: make sure that you never stop learning, because once you stop learning, you start dying. Don't mm -hmm. think you know. Oof. School is over. Hey, if you're like me, when I was finishing school, I say if I stick classroom again, to today I've not done masters. I'm not even lying. Everybody, <laughs> one, two, two, three masters. I don't have half. I I just finished university. I'm like, hey, we are done, right? But I'm a, but I'm I'm always a student. I'm constantly learning. I'm part. I'm part of so many master classes, masterminds, you know, courses. I'm constantly learning because the reason why you're where you are today is the information that you have. Period. If you want to go to another level, you're going to need new information to get to that level. The reason why I'm not yet a billionaire in dollars is because I don't know how to be one. I don't have the information that I need yet. So that's why I'm actually, I want to start a WhatsApp group with Mr. Nia and Mr. Abubakar because now I need to become, <laughs> I, need to become a, I need to become a billionaire in dollars, right? And they have the information, so I need to get it from them, right? So I'm going to end my way, serve my way, or pay my way into that information that's how you should think every single time the reason why you're where you are is because you don't know what to do to get to the next level yeah. another yeah. thing is that opportunity dances with those on the dance floor if you are oh. not in the game if you are not on the dance floor when opportunity comes it's yeah. not going to dance with you so you have to always be on the dance floor and I'm going to borrow from what my brothers here have said. Success is, it favors the bold. It really does. If success favors the bold. So you really have to be audacious. You have to just go at this thing, thinking to yourself that it's impossible for me to fail. Guys, that's my thought process in everything that I do in life. I either win or I win. It's impossible for me to fail. That does not mean that there are certain things that I've done that didn't go quite well. But guess what? I didn't fail, though. I learned. Yeah. I didn't fail. I learned. Mm -hmm. I learned a way not to do that thing. Or I learned that, you know what? You have to do it in a certain different way. So I either win or I win. And everything that I do, every new project, every new business, every new hustle, as we call it, I'm thinking that I'm either going to win or I'm going to win. Forget about Sakba. It is what it is. We're in a recession. Are you the government? We can mm. sit here and talk about it for the next five years. There is absolutely nothing you and I can do to change that. And guess mm. what? There's a recession all over the world. Don't think it's just Nigeria. Right now, I'm in Canada. There is a recession. Food is two and a half times the price it used to be a year ago. So the recession is not, is not, is not only in Nigeria. However, we're not focused on the recession. What is a recession really? It's a time of decreased economic activity. So what do you do? You increase your own economic activity. That's not the time to roll over and play dead. That's the time to apply pressure. That's the time that you actually apply pressure. And the truth is a lot of people are rolling over and playing dead because they're thinking, okay, we're in a recession. There's nothing I can do. So guess what? The competition is less. The competition is less. So you actually have a bigger chance of making more money, of becoming more successful now than before. Mm -hmm. 
think to yourself, you know what? There's nothing I can do about the recession or about Sakba. What I can affect is my own personal economy. You can't affect the economy of Nigeria. You're not CBN governor. Sorry. <laughs> you are not President Buhari. There is nothing you're going to do that will change the economy. You can only change your personal economy, the economy of your family. Every day I think to myself, I am the curse breaker in my family. It is me. Yeah. I don't come from a rich home. My father was not a billionaire. My mother was not a billionaire. So I am the curse breaker. It is me. I'm not leaving it to Toby because you're cheesy. It is me. Every family that you know, one person came. One person came and changed the family's success history and changed the family's wealth. I am that person. You've got to think to yourself that it is me. I am the curse breaker in my family. And if you know that you are the curse breaker in your family, then you have the responsibility to sit down and say, you know what? I'm going to write my success blueprint. Yeah. I'm going to write, write it down and make it plain. I'm going to write my success bl blueprint. I'm going to be disciplined. What are the five things that I must do every single day that is taking me to my dreams and my goals? It is you guys. You are the curse breaker in your family. So never lose sight of that. Never. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, realize that you are the cost breaker in your family. I am the cost breaker in my family. You know, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Stanley is laughing. So yes, this, this is it for me. So we have a question. I have a book. A, I have written a book, Buy Your Future, and I would love to get that to schools to help build intentionality in the lives of young ones, but how do I go about it? I love Stephanie. She's shooting her short. So, <laughs> Mr. Nee, how would Stephanie go about um, distributing her books to schools? What do you think she can do about it? I think if she can organize uh, to go to corporates and uh, um, tap into their CSR, uh, the CSR part of the corporate organization, they can uh, she can request that they buy those books and then be distributed to, to schools. Uh, I'll be more than happy to support such an initiative on behalf of BFD. Woo, Stephanie, congratulations. Please hold Mr. Nui by his, his shirt. Oh. He has said he will support you. So this is why you should be in 20's tribe, you know. Um, if you are 30, sorry, but <laughs> we can't help you. So yes, thank you so much, Mr. Nui. There's another question. How do you stay restless, ambitious, especially after accomplishing your short-term, long-term goals? In other words, how do you avoid complacency? Um, this is for all money. Why is it for me? Why is it well, for me? I, I, I think the, uh, already No, 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 no. All money has achieved, so we want to hear from her. You are too struggling. All money has achieved. Oh, my God. You had my red carpet moment. Me, that I'm not a billionaire. Don't do that. I'm, you are I'm, glam. I'm for you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so it's, it's simple. You just dream bigger dreams. Just never stop dreaming. How, how do you say, oh, I've achieved my long term, my short term and my long term goals. So, you know, how do I stay restless and ambitious? If you don't get hungry, you can't eat another meal. So stay hungry. Stay hungry. Dream bigger dreams. I have dreams that are so big. When I think about them, my heart is like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, how am I going to achieve this? Right. The minute that you, you know, you have a clear path to achieving a dream is no more a dream. It becomes a goal. Right. So keep dreaming. Dream your biggest, wildest dreams. Dream the dreams that even you know that you don't have a clue how to achieve it, how this is going to come, come to pass. You have no clue. So just always stay hungry. The only way to eat another meal is to get hungry again. So yes, you've achieved this. You've achieved a short-term goal. You've achieved a long-term goal. You need to dream a bigger dream. That's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Stay hungry. Stay hungry. Um, Rukayat Tyson. Oh, beautiful name. When is the best time to call for investors in a business? Are there businesses that don't need investors? We already, so know, who that, we already know who that is. Question is for. We don't even need to think. Don't that question. Question. He knows himself. 
I hope you guys are not confusing me with Neil. We're two different. <laughs> um, look, uh, when is the best time to to seek for an investment um, or an investor in your business? It is when that additional capital can create more value than you will be creating without it. In other words, bringing in that money means that you create something that is much bigger than what you are creating by yourself. So the whole conversation about an investor is the new value, additional value we are going to create. How much of it will I give you? How much do I get? Traditionally, you don't want to bring in an investor where the additional value you are creating, the investor takes it all. You might as well just control your business and continue to grow organically, right? So the number one question is that if I put in 10 million in this business today, does it make the business much more competitive? Does it give us new market, new customer base? It's got to be always about that. Are there businesses that don't require you to raise capital? The truth is yes, right? Because there are some businesses where what you are leveraging is your intellectual property. So, for instance, if you are a creative, you are an artist, you are a writer, right? You don't necessarily need to raise capital, right? Obviously, there are instances where people, even writers, have raised money so that they can look after themselves in the period of writing. But traditionally, when the value, source of value is you as a person, you don't need to put capital to deliver value. But when your business requires you to have what I would call um, material capital, not intellectual capital, then at some point you may need to raise money. But for every single time you have to ask, does this new money make us a much more compelling business than we would be if we didn't raise money? That question is something you repeat every single time. Um, and just for uh, illustration, uh, my younger brother is building a business in renewable energy. There was a point where you know, a couple of people came together and offered to give him an investment. Very interesting. He had never seen that kind of money before, excited about it. It was external validation. And the business was as good as sealed. And I sat him down one day and asked him, what is your pathway forward? And as we looked at the pathway forward, we realized that there was a clear path to significance that didn't require a third party to jump into the business. And so he declined that investment and built it internally. So you've got to ask yourself, can I go on my journey faster, more secured on my own? Or will I gain that advantage if I bring in someone else to work with me? Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Abubakar. Okay, so this person specified for Mr. Nee. I read that VFD Group was started with friends. How did they manage to separate the friendship with business and financial growth? Very important question. Very, very important question. But also the premise is not 100% correct. So mm -hmm. most of us came together for the business and then developed a friendship from that. But uh, at the beginning of uh, my intro as well, I, I did say that your values are very, very important. The good thing about the set of people that came together was that we have the same set of values and same set of objectives. Uh, the success of VFD Group, the continued, continued success of VFD Group is priority for everybody. So when we come into the room, we try as much as possible to pack our egos, to pack sentiments, to even pack the friendship and deliberate and make the best decisions for VFD group. If someone else has the best idea after deliberating, you take it and everybody supports that idea and goes to market with that idea. Um, there's no doubt that in partnerships, it can get difficult. Um, you know, I say ego, sentiments, all those things are easier said to park than in reality. But just always make sure that from the start, you get it right. Make sure that you have the same set of values, same set of objectives. It makes it easier. It doesn't make those things disappear, but it makes them easier to deal with as they come along. Uh, I'm very grateful today. Uh, I'm godfather to many of my partner's children. Uh, they're, they're, one of them is partner to my only son. And we have enjoyed a beautiful relationship. We enjoy working together. And uh, yeah, uh, touch wood, the fact that we set out clear objectives from the start is still carrying us and will continue to carry us. Okay, thank you so much, um, Mr. Nee. Thank you so much. Um, so someone is saying, Mr. Nee, you're passionate about arts. How can young people tap into this and how profitable is it? 
Well, um, I, I like the question because it uses passion and it uses profit in the same question. Uh, <laughs> <Art. laughs> yeah, a lot of times those two Art things are not always right? tied together. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times they're not always tied together. Uh, but luckily, we have this platform called Artsplit, uh, which is a digital platform that allows for fractional ownership of uh, investment grade art. And what it does is that it allows you with as little as uh, two or three cents to be able to buy part of a great work. And you can also trade the work on the platform. Um, to be passionate about art is also very different. I think Abubakar was saying earlier about his passion for poetry. Uh, sometimes not all passion is profitable. Uh, yeah. But if you deal at the highest end of art, uh, we've seen over time that it's, it's been profitable. But I also say, please don't go into art trying to make a profit. Try to use it as something that's cultural, use it to learn, use it to fool yourself, and ultimately it will pay off, whether in cash or just building you as a person. Okay, thank you so much. Adioba, I, I hope that, that answers your question. Question for Omoni. As a writer, I sometimes feel like the industry is saturated and there's nothing more to bring to the table. How do you advise upcoming writers or creatives at large to stand out? That's a good question. Um, so it's really simple. The industry is not saturated in any way, shape or form. Um, people are still looking for good writers every day. The fact that there are 100 writers out there does not mean that all 100 of them are good or they're putting out good work. You've seen a lot of movies that you thought to yourself, uh, write this film safe <laughs> you know what i mean you know so someone wrote it and it wasn't great it wasn't great <laughs> you know so if you think that you are good and you have value and you have something to bring to the table then the thing to do is make sure that one you don't give up on yourself you don't give up on yourself you don't look at yourself and say oh you know what it's saturated let me go no industry is saturated there's no such thing that thing that people talk about saturation is something we say just to, you know, um, give an excuse for why we're not making it or give an excuse for why we don't want to go into that industry. There are people who came into industries like 10, 20 years after that industry became an industry and they're doing better than the pioneers. Sorry. Right. So there's no saturation. Just make sure that you put yourself out there, put your work out there. It might actually see people are always waiting for when they can send this great script to Omoni Oboli and she'll read it and she'll just be like, oh my gosh, I love your script. Let's make the film. It might never happen. I might never open your email. I might never read your script. But put yourself out there regardless. It might literally come from you writing cute little, cute little things to put on social media. See, with social media today, I keep saying to my kids, I say, why am I not a teenager or in my early 20s now, now? Ah, uh, ah! Uh, with social media today, you can you can be and do almost anything. Write some nice prose or something. Put it on social media. Someone will come across it. Every single day, you see people blowing on social media. Why can't it be you? Why can't it be you? Someone will come across it. You might you might write that thing and keep tagging everybody. Tag all the filmmakers that you know. Someone might see that tag and read it. I'm like, hmm, interesting premise and send you a message. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So don't give up and don't think it's saturated. It's not. I, see, if I get 100 scripts, 99.9 .9 are trash. So how is it saturated? It's not. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so Gloria, thank you so much, Omoni. Um, no industry is saturated. There's always space. You just have to, you know, package your talent to the table and you know the space there's there's space there's space we need more writers especially in the movie industry right thank you so much um casey is saying mrs omoni omoni did you have to compromise in life due to early marriage what one anchor advice you can give to ladies in their 20s with marriage and making a difference as a dream so, you know, first thing you have to know about life is that there's no one size fits all. 
mm. right? So it's not, this is my path. Doesn't mean that that's going to be your path or it doesn't mean that, you know, if you don't get married early, then you're not going to be successful. Or if you decide to face your career first, you know, so my path is that I got married early, right? So I got married very early and then, um, I started to build the career after I'd had all my kids, right? However, that might not be someone else's path. They might decide to build your career first before they get married. No one is wrong. No one is wrong, right? If you decide, you know what? I want to build a career first. I want to make something of myself first before I get married. That's fine. If you want to get married first, just make sure that you're marrying someone as a woman, because this is a woman asking the question. Just make sure that you're marrying someone who's going to let you um, live your life in terms of build a career. And don't think that, oh, this guy is coming, he's acting like, oh, the kind of person that um, that's not going to um, allow me live my life, right? He's acting like that kind of person. But you know what? When we get married, he'll change. He's not going to change. Love is blind. Marriage is an eye opener. Mm. That's the truth. It's not, he's not going to change. You're not his mom. His, his mom didn't change him. You're not going to change him. Let's just get that right, okay? So if you if you want to build a career after marriage, please marry someone who is open to you having a career, who's not going to stifle your growth yeah. because it happens a lot, a lot. A lot of people come, they want to marry actresses. You marry her, you say you can't act again. Hello, or guy, when did you, where, when you met her, what was she doing? <laughs> Do you understand? However, mm -hmm. it is what it is. So no, I'm just saying that to say there's no one that is actually bad, right? You just decide the path that you want to tow, but make sure that you're making the right decisions while you're towing that path, right? Mm -hmm. So really, that's it. So yeah, in life, there's no one size fits all. You know, marry early, marry later, just ensure you're building your career. That's very important. So this question, in the face of uncertainty and a world that is constantly changing, for example, the coronavirus outbreak, what are the most critical change that we must make to face the future effectively? So I throw this open um, to Omoni, Abubakar, and me. Me, you take my share of the question. <laughs> <laughs> he's the art collector. He, he is the he's in a restful place now. He can no, but Mr. Abubaka, you still have to you still have to go back to your um your poetry. I believe so. You I do. believe so. Yeah. Now you're, believe talking, but you're not doing it for money anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. there's money. He has, he has so made all the money. No, I no, on the question. contrary, I've realized that money is not going to free me, so I've left that journey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh but, but I, I wanted to say something about, and before I come back to the, the VUCA world, um, there was a question around how do you, what do you do when you've achieved your goals or your dreams, right? My conviction is that anyone that is on this call is probably uh, far above average talented human being that has the capacity to be in the top 5% or even top 1%. If you dream and you limit your dream to yourself and your immediate um, community, primarily your family, the likelihood that you will achieve your dream very early in life is very high. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes you're not careful when you get to that bus stop, you get lost. Um, and getting lost means that you probably start to pursue pleasure and other things just to numb the pain of not being able to find purpose. Um, I set myself a target that I didn't want to earn a cover for myself after 40, that I needed to live a life that meant that whatever I had by 40 was sufficient for me. That way I can live the second half of my life doing something bigger than myself, right? It was just a thing that I said to myself. And it helped because it forced me to dream about things that I could never complete. If you say you want to improve the quality of life of Africans, you can never finish that dream. If you say you want to you know, reduce infant mortality, you will never finish it. It's just certain dreams that are so much bigger than you that it doesn't, the fear of running out of it is completely out of the question. There's a reason why I just came out of two days of retreat with my board and I'm honestly completely exhausted. So if you see my eye bag, it's lack of sleep. 
But I said I will come here today because I realized that the dreams that I have will not be delivered by me alone. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the host of it is going to be delivered by the 20s, right? Um, so the 20s tribe for me is my way of extending the life of my dream because mm -hmm. I've realized I'm never going to finish it. I will turn down an opportunity to speak with some of the most senior and powerful people. I walk away from those talks, but I never walk away from a chance to talk to the younger people Absolutely. because I realize that they are the ones that will carry on the dreams that I have. Um, as for being in a VUCA world, how do you, what is it that you must do? The most important thing you can do is to reverse this race towards external and social validation and start to pursue right. self-validation. Yeah. Um, in the last, my, my last video, I was talking to a couple of young people and I said something like, whatever validates you or whoever validates you enslaves you. Mm. Whoever validates you enslaves you. Even if it's your father that validates you, you are a slave to that. That man, the day he coughs, you will start to catch cold. If it's your spouse that validates you, it's understandable. But whoever validates you has a power over you that controls you. You must move gradually towards self-validation, that you can look at yourself and say, I am okay. When you achieve that, corona or no corona, you wake up the next day and get going with it. Thank you so much, Mr. Abubakar, and thank you so much. Um, any other person wants to contribute one or two things? Omoni? Please, what's the question again? <laughs> In the face of uncertainty um, and a world that is constantly changing, what are the most critical changes that we need to make to face the future effectively? Discipline. Hmm. I think you just have to be you just have to be someone who's very disciplined because at the end of the day how you do one thing is how you do everything right um I saw something in the comment section I need to look for it so the person says how do I improve myself I consciously know I don't do the right thing mm -hmm. but I just can't get on track with the right thing it's discipline if you are a person that is disciplined you will find a way to constantly do the right thing. Okay, so it's as simple as being disciplined with your day. When you wake up in the morning, what do you do? Do you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is pick up your phone and go on social media looking for what is not looking for you, right? Most people, that's the first thing they do. The minute their eyes open, they picked up their phone. Ah, hey, somebody has sex tape out. My goodness. Ha, who is with kids, baby mama? What's your business? <laughs> really? No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's be honest. How is that even putting food on your table? The more you're talking about them, the more popular they're getting, the more money they're making. Yeah, money. Like, mm -hmm. hey, looking for what's not looking for you. It's not, it does not. See, 17 people have text sex tape out. It does not concern you. Focus on your life. You wake up in the morning. What's the first thing that you do? Have you said your prayers? Because at the end of the day, we're nothing without God, right? Have you actually said your prayers? What about faith that you believe in? Did you read your Bible? Did you read your Quran or whatever it is that, whatever faith that you believe in? How, do, how have you set the course for your day? Okay. Before you went to bed, did you have a to-do list for the next day? You wake up in the morning, open your to-do list. After you've said your prayers, you've, done, you've moved your body. Listen, at the end of the day, it's mind, body, spirit. No matter how successful you want to be, there are certain things that you must be doing. Do you move your body every single day? Oh, I cannot join a gym. Hello, oh God, you don't need a gym. You don't. You can, you can literally jog on the spot for 30 minutes in your living room or in your bedroom. That's you've moved your body that day. And let me tell you something. You're going to say, oh, how does this affect my success? Health is wealth. Yeah. Health is wealth. See, if you have sore throat, you know sore throat, something as small as sore throat. If, if, if Ni has sore throat now, every time he swallows, if I say, I need that one billion, he no go answer me. Because at that point, <laughs> the pain. Go answer, is, answer. I, I will do answer. <laughs> <laughs> if you are using a book for that example, <laughs> <laughs> I will do the pain. <laughs> right? oh <my> God. <laughs> this is hilarious. But I'm just saying, like, health is what I agree. I agree. Day. Forget okay. all this hustle with the hustle. Forget whatever it is you're chasing. If anything happens to you, done. Yeah. Done. Right? So move your body every day for at least 30 minutes. Then go and check your to do list. 
and start going through them one after the other. Leave social media. When you now have time, maybe later in the evening, you have 30 minutes or you have one hour, you can go and check which person's baby mama. But really, it's not concerned you shall still. But you can go and check what's going on there. If you are not actively making money on social media, you have no business being there 24-7. Yeah. Your business. Because it can literally take over your life. Make sure that you don't pick up your phone once you wake up first thing. That's one thing you must know. So if you feel like you're constantly doing the wrong thing, it's because you don't have a blueprint yet. Right? Have a blueprint for your life. What is your life's mission? You know, Mr. Bubaka was saying that he realized that, you know what? I have to have, I have to be part of something bigger than myself. That's it. If I said that my mission is to end infant mortality in Africa, I cannot wake up every day and go on social media. How am I ending infant mortality? I wake up every day and, I, and I'm thinking, okay, so what next am I going to do? What mm -hmm. else? I'm writing things down, right? What is your mission for your life? Write it down and make it plain. That if I ask you now, you don't need to think. You tell mm -hmm. me, this is my mission. This is my vision. It doesn't it's only business that has vision and mission. Your life has to have one. That when, you're, when you're in the right path, you know at every given time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a vision. Have a mission, people. Um, and please focus on what is focusing on you this 2022 and 2023 moving forward. You know, thank you so much. It has been an amazing panel session. I totally enjoyed myself. <laughs> Who left that comment? <laughs> Me, I'm hailing you. I'm hailing you. Absolutely. It's been an amazing session. Thank you so much, Mr. Abubaka. Thank you so much, Omwane. Thank you so much, Mr. Ney. It's been an amazing session. The Precious, thank you so much, everyone. I'm sure that everyone has laughed and enjoyed and learned and, of course, took down things that are going to implement right away. Of course, we know that this is not just about learning. It's about the things that you take action with. So we're very grateful. And we have seen you do it over and over in your careers, in your business, in your family, over 20 years of experience. And so we are grateful to have you all. So thank you very much, Omone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Bubaka and Mr. Ne. I'm so, so great. I guess that um, we have our next guest coming up soon, um, um, Juliet. She's also in the house very shortly. Uh, so I just want everyone to put in the, in the comment section, how was this session for them? I see um, real estate, we call says it has been a very insightful session. I see um, Jennifer saying, thank you very much. Shalom saying, powerful. Um, Amarachi saying, I'm glad I didn't miss this session. I mean, it's been fire, fire all over the place. Um, so we'll bring up our next speaker soon. Mm -hmm. I can take it out and also bring me show. Um, so that we can have a conversation. Thank you so much. I guess that we'll be having you all in the, in the backstage now. I uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Well, well done, and thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. thank you, Precious. Thanks for excellent thank moderation. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm starting the WhatsApp group. Please. <laughs> yes, yes. I have a lot to learn. <laughs> all right. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 All right, thank you, Precious. Where's you? Wow. <laughs> that was an amazing session. It was wow, indeed. Wow, wow. I'm a big so thank you to all the amazing panelists. Big thank you to them. Yeah, I mean, big it, big it was very them. practical, not just some, some stuff where you just see it to motivate people. But you see, these people have actually lived it in their life, through mm -hmm. results over the years and decades and all of that. So. We're really grateful to them. Guess what, guys? We are live for the final session of the trend. <laughs> Man, it's been an amazing weekend. We started yesterday with the fire panel, a young, vibrant uh, panel. We call that the builders panel. We had um, we had Kemi on a bunch on that panel. We had Wally on number. We had um, Adora Lumina. We had um, do you want to remind me? Show. Sorry. Oh, yes. We had to um, know we had we had Inka, I think co-founder of Numba. Number on that panel. Yes, we had Kenny and Banjo. Banjo. It was actually incredible. Then, of course, we now ended the night with a <laughs> powerful session. Doctor, I mean that session was mind-blowing. I've listened to that session over and over again because she just said so much <laughs> truth, so much detail. Yes. I'm so excited about today. Also, we started with uh, Debola Williams. We we're talking about things that are very, very critical and important in terms of networking. Tell me what were your lessons from that session, Doctor. The, the, the Debola Williams? 
Yeah. I mean, I mean, just shows you how important relationships are, right? And how we need to take care of them and not just meeting people for for the I mean sake of meeting people, but adding value to them. Like he said something that was very important. He said that he doesn't feel pressure in meeting people because he always gives value first, right? So he's not bothered that, oh, is it is he trying to milk them out or no? He feels that he gives he always gives value first. So he's not under pressure to feel like, oh, he's just trying to extract value from them. And that's the most important thing again. When you give value to people ahead, even before when you need their help, you will not feel you will not feel that burden. You will not feel like you're trying to. I mean, for somebody to to enter a relationship with you, and I, I think that was really amazing. And I think yeah. just having that structure and that mindset of building relationships at your early age really makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. So now we are going into the final session. Um, just if you are just joining the Twenty Tribe or you just stumbled on this mistake, you maybe saw this somebody post it on WhatsApp status on Instagram. This is brought to you by Trend Strike. It's the largest community of young people in their twenties. I are driven with a vision of helping ensure that every young person in their twenties thrive, flourish, network, and live their best life. And that's why the next session is about living your best life, actually, right? So um, if you have not signed up and you're not part of the community yet, make sure that you visit trendestrike.com slash join. We're having an amazing uh, experience moving the park, an event that we host. I'm sure the technical team will be lining up that video. Uh, the moving the park is the largest um, outdoor event of um of of, of uh, movie experience so you, we're going to be having that coming up soon um i'd like the taking that time to play that video quickly before we bring out the next speaker uh so that we want everyone to register we're having a session in we have having one having in lagos in landmark and we're having another edition at ibadan and that's going to be an amazing stuff if you have been a part of any of the sessions i mean part of any of the previous experience you will tell that you always want to be there so technical team please over to you Moving in the park video, technical team. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. That was amazing. So, guys, make sure you get your tickets, get the links, um, um, join the tribe on all socials, follow us on all socials, you see your tickets, you get there and the link in the bio. All right, so show us the next session. Tell me what you are, you are expecting from the next session, living your best life. Really, I, I mean, even starting from getting the speaker and having to be here and having to have our keynote speaker, I think it's really an amazing amazing thing to see i mean you you'll be surprised that this can even happen but what i would say i want to take out is how to really build my life and structure it in a way that helps me because i'm still in my 20s that helps me in the next few years right and build it in a way that i mean i get to be happy my family gets to be happy the world gets to be happy everybody gets gets to be happy and impacted so i'm looking i'm looking at having a very engaging session even beyond myself and helping me to build my career onwards yeah Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. We are going to be bringing Juliet. Juliet is the director of Google in West Africa, and she's going to be taking the final session. And I'm excited about this. Guys, ensure we're going to be playing a video now, which is an intro video of our. Ensure that you send the links to your friends. Make sure they are part of this session. If you want not just yourself, but your friends and your family to ensure that they are living their best yeah. life, so make sure you send this link, put it on your WhatsApp status, put it on your Instagram stories, make sure you tweet it, follow the conversation, hashtag 20 Summit, hashtag Building to Last. And so, text him, please, can you just play out that video? And the next person is here on the screen will be Juliet. Juliet Ehimwan is director of Google in West Africa. She was named by Forbes as one of the top 20 power women in Africa 
by the London Business School as one of the 30 people changing the world and as one of the most influential people of African descent. She's also been featured in the BBC Africa Power Woman series and on CNN Innovate Africa. With over 25 years experience primarily in technology, oil and gas and new media industries across Europe, Middle East and Africa, Julia is a leading voice on innovation, transformation and leadership. She's received numerous awards for outstanding contribution to the digital landscape in Africa. Juliet holds an executive MBA from the London Business School, a postgraduate degree in computer science from the University of Cambridge, and a bachelor's degree in computer engineering from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife. She was awarded IT Personality of the Year in 2012 by the Nigeria Computer Society, Digital Personality of the Year 2016 by Marketing World, and received the 2015 Titans of Technology Award from Technology Africa. Julia is an executive coach and a member of the Forbes Coaches Council. Through her Beyond Limits Africa initiative, she is building leadership and organizational capacity. She recently published 30 Days of Excellence, a leadership and effectiveness guide. She also serves on a number of boards. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Julia Ehimwan to the 20 Summit. Yeah, I Julian. I'm not sure I can't seem to hear you. Hello, David. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Super excited. How are you feeling today, though? How are you doing? I'm feeling good. It's great to be here. And I love the topic of this session, living your best life. Yeah, I'm super excited that you're the one taking the action. So over to you. Um, I'm sure I'll be in the background and listening and just thank you. Thanks. Great, great. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. And um, I know it's been a couple of days. I, I hope it's been a great couple of days. I have listened to some of the sessions and I found them really, really great. Just inspirational people doing amazing things. And it's great to have forums like this to, to share experiences. So well done to the organizers. And uh, I look forward to our time together. So the, we're rounding up with living your best life, the path to fulfillment. And I, I think this is a very exciting uh, topic, which I'm really delighted to be, to be sharing with you. And I thought I'll break it down into a few simple concepts, simple but very powerful. And they spell the alpha, just uh, looking at the alphabets A to E. So we're going to be talking about the A to E of living your best life. And the A would be uh, talking about attitude, your beliefs, courage, discipline, and entrepreneurial spirit. And I'm going to take each of these and just share, you know, personal experiences as I go through this. I want this to be as interactive as we can manage. So do post questions and comments as I go on. Now, let's talk about attitude. So it's very interesting to consider the fact that in many ways, how you experience life is a function of your attitude. We're talking about living your best life. Your attitude, how you see the world, makes a lot of difference. I'm going to share a story. It's a story about two bricklayers at work building. Now, the first bricklayer looked very, very bored as he just laid one brick on top of the other. While the second bricklayer seemed very excited, very energized, and they were doing exactly the same job, both of them. Now, the first bricklayer was asked, what are you doing? And he said, I am laying bricks. And the second bricklayer was asked the same question, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm building the biggest cathedral in the city. I'm sure we can see the difference. They were both doing exactly the same job. But the first bricklayer could not see a higher purpose to what he was doing. So he was just focused on the task laying one brick on top of the other. And to his mind, there was nothing particularly exciting about that. But the second bricklayer knew that he was part of something big, a small part maybe, but an important part nonetheless. Now, of course, you can imagine that the second bricklayer would be the one to take an interest in seeing how the cathedral design unfolds to see how the different uh, parts came together, etc. If there was an opportunity for a higher job, 
who do you think would be more ready? Most likely, the second bricklayer. And why is that? Because he is the one that would most likely be more informed because he is the one that would have taken an interest in finding out more about what's going on. And so he would be more qualified. And this is a very important lesson. I do a lot of coaching and sometimes I speak to people who say, where I am now is not where I want to be. However, where you are now is what you have. Wherever you want to go to, you can only start from where you are now. If you want to go to the moon, <laughs> you have to start from where you are now. And where you are now offers you something. And this is really important to contemplate at this stage of your life. I assume that majority of the audience are in their 20s. You're in, a lot, most of you are in your 20s. So it's a very important time to consider and imbibe these concepts. That where I am now offers me something. There's a time for everything. There's a time to plant. There's a time to harvest. There's a time to do the work. There's a time to um, uh, you know, enjoy the rewards. Where you are now offers you an opportunity to learn. And maybe that's your task right now. To learn, the, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to show what you are made of. So you may be in employment, for example, and it's an opportunity for you to just show. Maybe you feel the role you are doing right now is, you know, you're not at capacity. Maybe you feel you can be much more or you can do much more. Well, where you are now is your opportunity to show that. Put your heart and soul in what you're doing now. And you never know who's watching. You never know what's around the corner. So that if there's an opportunity for a higher job, one that perhaps you think is more suited to your capabilities, you will be an obvious choice because you've shown what you are made of. The last thing you want to do is to be coasting through life, right? To just be going through the motions. I'm not particularly demotivated. This is not where I want to be. Maybe I'm waiting for where I can, when I can japa, <laughs> right? Maybe I'm waiting for, I just feel like, look, this place is not it. I'm just waiting for when I can japa, just like uh, some of my colleagues have, you know? Well, then you miss a trick because, you know, as time is passing, so is your life. And every moment counts and gives you an opportunity to expand yourself. And attitude is so important because you may have something really um, useful in your hands, but with the wrong attitude, you either lose it or you don't make good use of it. For example, social media. Social media can be a very empowering tool for, for, for some people. If you have the right attitude, for example, right, you go on social media and you're inspired. You see great things that are being done. You, you, you maybe you follow people who inspire you or people who have walked the path you're looking to tread and so on, right? So you get a lot of useful and helpful data from social media. Or if you have the wrong attitude, it might be a tool for just beating yourself up. You go on social media and you see all the things that in your mind your mates are doing and you are not doing. <laughs> So that's a tool right there that could be empowering, but because of the wrong attitude, you don't make use of it or it even becomes a ne negative factor in your life. What's your perception to life? What's your attitude to life? Do you see the glass half full or half empty? Do you always focus on the problem rather than looking at the solution? Are you the kind of person that you will complain till the cows come home? everything is wrong with every system? Or would you focus on where you can actually make a difference and see what you can do with that? Again, what's your attitude to life? When we talk about living your best life, do you just wait for things to happen to you, right? You're blown by the wind. You just go whatever direction seems to be coming your way or whatever direction you're getting pushed into, you sort of just, you know, go with the flow? Or are you intentional about deciding how you want your life to, to unfold? Another way of saying that 
is do you have a vision for how you want your life to turn out? I always say that to live the life you want, you need to define it. Only then can you create it the way you want. If you're in your 20s, you have your whole life ahead of you. This is a great time to build the important foundational elements. What's your vision for what you desire in different aspects of your life? Life exists in multiple domains. There's work, there is family, relationships, finances perhaps, physical well-being, emotional well-being, your social interactions, just different areas of life that are important to you. What are you looking to have and how do you create a balanced perspective across these areas? These are important questions to consider. And so the saying goes that your attitude determines your altitude. And also our attitude towards life determines life's attitude towards us. Life essentially is what you make it. If you see the glass as half full, then it's half full. If you see, if you see it as half empty, that is your experience. Both are true, but which perspective serves you better? So we need to be intentional about how we interpret, how we look at life and how we interpret the things around us. We need to remember to count our blessings, to see the things that we can be grateful for. I always talk about an attitude of gratitude, to see the things that you can be grateful for, because wherever you are, if you just look over your shoulder, you'll find someone that is probably not as endowed as you are, that doesn't have the opportunities that you have, that is that would actually really love to be in your shoes. And so it's really critical that we're intentional about deciding and defining our paradigm, how we look at life. So that's about attitude. And then we've got to be another concept, which is beliefs. And this is just really about your mindset. We all have, every human being has that constant conversation in your head, that voice that goes on and on and on. Sometimes that voice can be very empowering, but sometimes that voice is a tool that we use to beat ourselves up because it's there telling you, oh, you haven't done this. Your mates have, your mates have done this. They'll never give you that job. You'll never get that promotion. It's not people like you that succeed in business and so on and so forth. On and on it goes. I'm sure we all have different versions of this language. Those are limiting beliefs. On the flip side, you have beliefs that lift you up, that speak to the fact that you can do it. Maybe I don't have the answers now, but I can learn. I can practice and so on. It's very important that we cultivate the habit of recognizing because sometimes you don't even know what's running the show. You don't realize that you have that mental chatter going on, right? Uh, pulling you back, preventing you from taking the step forward, from putting your hand up to say, I can do this. So it's important to actually recognize what's running the show and then to be able to separate facts from fiction <laughs> or your story about the fact. So, for example, you may have the belief or the mindset or the perception that I don't have a godfather. Therefore, I can't succeed in business. Or I don't have a sponsor in my organization, therefore, I can't move up the ranks. That could be, so, so let's, let's unpack that for, for, for a minute. Maybe it's true you don't have a godfather in your experience or a sponsor.
But what's the fact around us? What's the evidence? There are many people that have succeeded without Godfathers that will share their stories about how they worked hard at it, put their, either it's a business plan or a resume forward, and they were able to get ahead. There are many such stories. Some of them didn't even have some of the gifts and the blessings that you have right now. So that is evidence to show that the story that because I don't have a godfather, I can't succeed is not true. Maybe you don't have a godfather, but that doesn't mean you can't succeed. So the empowering belief there would be to turn that around and say, okay, well, right now, I don't feel like I have a godfather. So what do I need to do? What are the requirements for this job? Or what are the requirements to get funding for my business? Or who can I reach out to? Maybe they may, they may not be established as my godfather, but who can I reach out to for help, for insight, for support? What can I do, right, to actually lean forward to make that happen? So it's also very um, crucial that we're thinking through um, what is my mindset? What's my perspective on life? What are the belief systems that I hold? Are they holding me back or are they allowing me to lean forward? Because at the end of the day, you can be your best champion. You are the one that would decide whether your life is going to matter or not. Whether you deserve a seat at the table or not. Or whether your dreams are valid and whether you deserve a chance at realizing those dreams. And that's a choice you would do well to make right from this stage of life because it also helps you to build the muscle and cultivate the right habit, the right sets of habits and, and ways of thinking that serve you. So the third C, the, 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 C, uh, the third uh, concept, which is our C, is about courage. There's a saying that life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. Life itself is a lesson in courage. My late mother used to say, it's not the life that matters, but the courage you put into it. That was her way of saying that it's not really about the things that happen to you but it's your ability to pick yourself up and keep moving regardless. It takes courage to go after your dreams. There are some people that don't bother dreaming because they just feel they don't have what it takes because they are afraid to even stand up. Fear is something that is natural. It's a natural human experience. Everybody experiences fear. You may be experiencing certain fears where you are right now. Maybe there are fears associated with the next step that you're about to take. It could be about, about your work. It could be in business. It could be something in your family life. It could be whatever you're dealing with, right? You may experience fear. Courage is not the absence of fear but it is acting regardless of the fear. So feeling the fear, but forging ahead anyway. Because it takes courage for you to say, you know what, I can do that job, give me a chance. I've, 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 I've had uh, experiences of people who spoke up. There's a, spe a specific example where a gentleman applied for a role and there was a conversation about the fact that there was he, he didn't have enough experience and he was about to lose that opportunity but he spoke up and said please give me a chance i'm very hard working i'm a fast learner i can do this job and the 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 passion with which he spoke the commitment with which he spoke really struck a chord with his interviewers and they gave him a chance and that's how he got that job which really made a difference to his life 
I also remember I was at a conference, I was speaking at a conference uh, a while back and uh, a lady got up to ask a question from the audience and she talked about what she had been doing, etc. And from the way she spoke, I just got a sense that um, I could work with this person. So I told her to see me after the conference. She did take the step and she came to see me. And subsequently, um, you know, she, we, we started working together and she got hired into, into, into the organization and uh, she's still with the organization today. So, you know, in terms of living, living your best life, it takes courage to define what that is, to believe that you deserve it, and to take the steps to go after it. It may require making some bold requests. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, you're not going to be shot. The worst that can happen is you get a no. Well, guess what? Many people that have succeeded have gone through many cycles where they got no's and they were fine. They survived it and even thrived on the other side. And as we go through life, it's important we develop that muscle of courage. Like I said, life is a lesson in courage. When you wake up each morning, you put on that cloak of courage and say, today I'm going to be unstoppable. Today I'm going to go after what serves me. I'm going to go after my dreams. I'm going to go after my goals. I'm going to make things happen. I'm going to be a blessing to my family. I'm going to be a great team player and so on and so forth, depending on what we're really looking to accomplish. And then moving on to our concepts, D would be discipline. So we've talked about attitude, beliefs, courage. Now we talk about discipline. When you hear the word discipline, I wonder what comes to your mind. This, I find that discipline often gets a bad rep because when we think of discipline, some of us think about, oh gosh, hard work, sacrifice, just pain, etc. But the reality is, in a way, discipline, self-discipline is the highest form of self-love because it's about not shortchanging yourself. For you to move from A to B requires discipline. You can have a great vision, you can have great dreams, but to make them happen, you have to get into action at some point. You have to make the move. Maybe it's to go and learn something. Maybe it's to have, to have a conversation. At some point, you need to make that move and it takes a certain level of discipline to follow through, to remain committed to the cause. And some of you may have experienced cases where when you either shortchange yourself or maybe there's something you really feel you, you really desire to do, it's calling you somehow, but you either because it, it just seems like it, it's, it's difficult or it's inconvenient or whatever, you sort of um, uh, keep yourself from doing that. You stay in your safe, in your comfort zone, in your safe corner, right? You may have experienced that thought, that nagging thought in your mind that, ah, you're better than this. You can be more than this. You can do more than this. You're better than this. So even though you seem to have gotten away with it in the short term, somehow deep down you're dissatisfied because there's something in the human spirit that seeks constant expression, constant expansion. If you have a talent, then there's something about human beings that really speak to expressing that talent. Otherwise you feel caged. You feel like you're not living your best life. If we think about children trying to walk, say a, 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 a child trying to walk, the child may fall 20 times, 100 times even, but that the parent would never say, okay, 100 times, that's enough. I think this walking thing is not for you. 
let's just call it a day. Just keep crawling. That would never happen. The child also would never not try to walk. Why? Because walking is a human expression. It's an expression of growth, moving to the next level. Otherwise, the child is not living his or her best life. The child is not getting into full self-realization. It's stunted growth. It's the same thing. We need to constantly think about creating the structures that can support us to actually achieve our goals, to take the steps needed to achieve our goals. We need to be able to organize for success. So once you have a vision, you're clear where you want to go, then you create a plan. Because a vision without a plan is like wishful thinking. Create a plan that breaks that vision into, that clearly articulates your goals and then breaks it into simple achievable steps and milestones because guess what when you break it into uh, little chunks it becomes less daunting sometimes you have a vision or a dream or or an aspiration it just seems so big where do i start from but when you create a plan it helps to demystify the vision and the next step to take would usually be a lot less daunting than the big vision. It's like saying, you can't just go from zero to hero. You can't go from A to Z, just like that. You have to go from A to B, B to C, maybe you even jump a few steps, C to F, right? But it's a methodic process, right? And so if you, if you create a plan that has different steps, it helps you, especially those who struggle with procrastination. Quite often, why you procrastinate is because the vision or the goal just seems so big, it's daunting, and so it cripples you. You just find yourself unable to move into action because it's almost like, where do I even start from? But when you create a plan with simple steps, then you know the next step to take, then the next step, then, then the next step. And quite often, that's how we travel. If I'm going, say, from Lagos to Ibadan, I don't see the full picture, but I have, a, I have a vision which gives me direction. And as I travel, say I'm going by road, I may see the next five, five meters, the next 100 meters, and so on. And I go all the way from Lagos to Ibadan that way, not seeing the full picture, but taking those steps, right? The next, the next, the next wave, the next wave, the next wave because I have a clear vision and I have direction. Also, in terms of organizing yourself for success, it's important to understand your strengths and also where you need support. And look at ways to cater for the gaps that you, ex that, that you experience on a regular basis. So if, for example, your goal is to build capacity in a certain area. Maybe you want to learn a certain, um, uh, 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 learn something, right? Maybe it's improve your, your IT skills or something, right? Or maybe it's even fashion or, or catering. There's just something you want to learn. Is there someone that you can, someone in your life you can work with to give yourself a head start? or that can hold you accountable? Are there different ways you can leverage the people in your life? You know, maybe you want to read more, you, you, you could potentially join a book, book club or start a book club. Or maybe you want to exercise more, join a running club or start a running club. Or maybe you don't like to walk or to, but you like to dance, right? Let that be your fitness routine. Like look at how you can organize your, your, your world for success, to be able to achieve the things you want to achieve. It's important to take personal responsibility for accomplishing the things that are important to you. And that goes back to what we, where we started, which is attitude. What is your attitude? Are you waiting for things to just fall into place? Or do you take responsibility for making things happen? 
Do you take responsibility for going out there to find and get the answers? It's important that we take ownership for getting things done, for fulfilling our dreams, our visions. Still on our concepts, I would move to E, entrepreneurial spirit. So again, we've talked about attitude, we've talked about beliefs, <laughs> courage, and uh, discipline. Now we're on the final alphabet, which is entrepreneurial spirit. And here I'm talking about, you know, dreaming big, working hard and making it happen. Entrepreneurial spirit is just really having that drive that makes you unstoppable to say, you know what, I'm going to find a way to get this done. There may be challenges. I'll find ways to work around those challenges. I'm not going to give up at the first sign of, of you know, of an obstacle or um, stumbling blocks. I'll find a way to turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones. And that is a, a habit that we would really do well to see how we can cultivate turning stumbling blocks or what things that seem to be stumbling blocks into stepping stones. You can't always control what happens to you externally. We can't control government regulation. You can't control, uh, um, we can't control the weather. We can't control, you know, there's so many things we can't control. But there's one thing we can all control, and that is how you respond. Do you respond in an empowering way or a disempowered way? It may well be that you've even done your homework. Like maybe you've, uh, you've, 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 you've created a picnic, did everything right, and then it rains. You can't control the rain. Maybe you even checked the weather forecast, but it wasn't particularly accurate. You can't control the rain. But what you can do is to, to, to decide how you're going to respond to it, whether you're going to let it ruin your day and your experience completely, or whether you'll say, well, okay, here it is. We've got this uh, challenge. What do we do now? How do we work around this? How do we navigate this? It's important that we're unstoppable. Don't run at the first sign of difficulty or the first sign of a challenge. Let's get back to the drawing board. There are many ways to get to the same destination. If one way is closed, perhaps there are five others that are open. So let's get to the drawing board and see how can I make this happen? What can I learn from what has just happened? And how can I apply that learning to actually re-strategize, redesign, and move forward. I often say as well that there's no failure, only feedback. Because when things don't seem to work the way you expected them to, that's just data. That's data telling you what not to do. <laughs> data telling you what doesn't work. And you can take that data you can allow that data to discourage you and just you forget about it. Or you can take that data back to your drawing board and use it to develop a plan that actually does work. In the world today, and certainly in, uh, you know, certainly in Nigeria, across Africa, you know, there are many, there are many things that can, you may find yourself up against that could potentially want to discourage you from just for, for forging ahead and staying on course. But it's important we take a stand for ourselves. Decide that I'm going to go after this. I believe in it. I have what it takes. I can get help. There are tools that I, I, I can use. And there are many ways to arrive to, uh, at, at the solution. And so I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. We're also in an era 
where digital technologies have just made so many things available at our fingertips. I always say that there is hardly anything you want to do that doesn't exist in some form in a webinar or a how-to guide or a video or an article. There's so much information online to give you a head start. So much information you can learn from so that you don't even, you don't even have to make the same mistakes that others have. And so we can be really deliberate about making sure that we um, take advantage of everything that is before us, people, tools, information, to just carve out a path that can work for us. So to recap, I've just gone through A to E. A, we talked about attitude. The fact that how life is what you make it and how you view life, your attitude to life determines your experience of life. And then we talked about beliefs, B, and that is mindsets, how we think, whether we're always negative or whether we see the lessons and are empowered in any every situation. And we talked about in that space, empowering beliefs and limiting beliefs, important to identify those belief systems and make sure that they're working for you. The third was courage, the fact that life is a lesson in courage. Mm -hmm. For you to take a stand for yourself and say, this is what I deserve. This is what I desire for my life to be about. This is who I am, it takes courage. And it's important to, uh, to define that very early on and build that as a habit as we go on. The, th the fourth was D and that is discipline. The fact that you can hardly accomplish things without a certain amount of discipline. Sometimes we need to just really mobilize ourselves to do the work, to take the steps, to make things happen. <laughs> and then E, entrepreneurial spirit, which is just what makes you unstoppable to say, I will always find a way. I'm going to be innovative in looking at different options to get to the desired destination. So I'd like to pause there and take questions. And um, if we bring up the slides, so um, if we go to the if we go to the the final slide, the I've um, yeah the next one. The next one after this, we've just gone through this summary. So um, I've shared uh, some complimentary copies of my book, 30 Days of Excellence with the organizers. Um, I'm sure they'll communicate how, um, who's going to, to get what and how that's going to be this, uh, uh, shared. Uh, also just uh, if, in terms of getting additional tips and support, um, there's a Reach for Excellence workshop that I'm running um, and you get more information about this from the organizers as well. Uh, and you get a lot of information about that on social media. Uh, my handle is at Jayahimwan, and I, I post a lot of these tips and uh, information about the workshop uh, on social media as well. So thank you very much, and I'll be happy to take questions. Come together. I thank you so much. I can hear me. I can hear you. Thank you so much for the session. It was an amazing session. I like how detailed it was. Practical, right? And things that we can actually take home yes. and actually yes. remember. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure, how was it for you? I mean, it was it was really amazing. I, I think I really like the structure. And I really like the fact that it really answered the topic, which was the pathway to fulfillment. Because honestly, if you look at those five things, right, at every point in time, you need to have discipline. You need to have courage like even getting the speakers for 20 stripe and sometimes i tell david i'm like david how do you just wake up and say you want to get the speakers that's a lot of courage like i know how difficult it is to get i'm like ah, it's your courage where do you get it from so i mean just listening to her and i mean i just i'm just remembering everything that happened 
in building this summit and everything that happens in my life, I just find out that this A to E keeps on reflecting. Sometimes I'm like, mm, there's one particular D that I'm not repeating as I should. Sometimes I might have done it. Sometimes I will be slow with discipline. But I realize that these things, these five things, if you repeat them every point, every circle of your life, every season of your life, I mean, you you live a happy life. <laughs> it's very simple. Yeah, so yeah. it was really good for me. Thank you so much. It's actually non-negotiable, absolutely. All of this is to you. There's no way you can't negotiate on them. You literally have to follow True. the steps to your best life. Then, like I said, you can't keep the gun at all. It's not possible. And that's why I really like how that really detailed and practical. Thank you very much. So let's take questions from the from the audience. We have a question from Innocent. Um, it says, how do, how do one resist the voices of dis discouragement when walking towards your goal? That's a great question. And we all have those voices now and then. I talked about feel the fear and forge ahead anyway. The voices of discouragement come from fear, right? Um, oof, what if this doesn't work? No, you don't have what it takes. No, you can't do this, etc. right? So you can acknowledge that fear, but just make sure that, but also let you be, be clear about the facts. You know, for example, uh, what's required for whatever it is you're trying to undertake, what's required? Have you done your homework, right? And if not, what are the steps you need to take? Because again, it's not about, you know, um, uh, like I said, it's not about wishful thinking, right? get clear about the fact what are the things that are required for me to do and if i do need help also getting help another thing that is helpful is remind yourself of some of the things you've accomplished in the in the past evidence of past performance because that can also remind you of your capability remind you that ah, I, I've, I've i'm i'm not that i'm not too bad i i you know, I've and it, you know, I've had to do that with myself. You know, on, on on occasions now and then. You know, when I'm faced with something that just seems quite like a, a fresh challenge that you know seems daunting, there are times I've had to remind myself that, you know, I can I can try now. <laughs> I've done I've done uh, all you know some I've accomplished some things in the past. I can apply myself. I can I can learn. Right. And I can I can make this happen. So it's important that we're able to speak to ourselves in that way to remind yourself, to be clear about the, the fact and also remind yourself of evidence of past performance. And also you can feel the fear, but just forge ahead anyway, making sure that you've done your homework and uh, whatever prep work is required. All right. Great. Um, I've got a quick. OK, I'm curious. Do you have an F of it? <laughs> of course, you <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, when you talk about um, faith, when we talk about beliefs, yes, when we talk about beliefs and mindsets, you have faith right in there because what you believe is that's what we're talking about, right? Um, in terms of, um, you know, do you believe it, it's possible or not, right? Whatever you, uh, whatever the mind can conceive, the mind can achieve, etc. If you believe you can, if you believe you can't, then you can't, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, you know, if there's there's beliefs in there, and uh, it speaks to faith. Um, now, if you're talking about, um, uh, I, I don't know if that's what you're referring to, or if you're talking about um, that's what religious. That's what yeah, that's right. okay. All right. All right, Sean. Do you have a question? Your music, Sean. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you very much, Andrea. So my question is, I mean, we're talking about the pathway to fulfillment, right? So what do you think about having coaches and having a community? I mean, like trying to try, what, what we try to do is build a community. People know each other, where, where you can help each other to grow. What do, what do you think about having a community and having coaches to guide you on that way to fulfillment? And how has that practically helped you to get to where you are at the moment? I think communities are very important. No man is an island. And, um, you know, it's great to have communities of like-minded people and the opportunity to share ideas, to learn from one another. Because sometimes when you hear that someone else has similar challenges to yours, you're encouraged. You're encouraged to say, okay, it's not just me. <laughs> I'm not crazy or I'm not strange, right? This is, this is noble and we can find a way. Within communities as well, you can also get 
accountability partners. They can be a way, a, a good support system. When I talked about organizing for success, etc., communities can be a good support system. And in terms of coaching, I would even I, I approach that at two levels. One is, you know, being able to coach yourself. So when we talk about your mindsets, right? A lot of that is conversation with yourself. You know, first and foremost, it's important that you are your own coach, right? You're able to coach yourself into action. You're able to, you know, remind yourself of, you know, like your past accomplishments, you know, remind, encourage yourself to forge ahead, to be courageous, remind yourself of your vision and why, why this is important, those types of things. But also there may be times when you need to actually get external help, right? Maybe get another, a coach or a mentor, or even just speak with a friend who you know has your back and would always tell you the truth and give you good insights. So it's really looking at what you need and, and being deliberate and intentional about getting it. All right. So how can one, the next question is from Messi, how can one manage failures and be motivated before the end? I think it's very similar to your question. Yeah. The first thing to just recognize is failure is natural. I, I think every, I don't know if there are some super, super, super human members of, uh, <laughs> of this group or, uh, or in the world, some superheroes out there. But I think um, uh, for us hu human beings, uh, I think almost everyone has experienced some level of failure at some point in time, right? It's just how you frame it and what you make it mean, whether you, you define the failure as you. The fact that you failed doesn't mean you, you are a failure. The behavior or the, the circumstance doesn't de de define who you are. So the fact that you failed at something doesn't mean you are a failure. It's important first and foremost to get that right, to make that separation, right? You failed at something doesn't mean you are a failure. You've succeeded at a lot of other things in the past. So to remember that, to know that failure is natural, there are times when things won't go as planned, right? And to just look at, have that conversation with yourself, to not allow the failure to throw you off, right? To learn what there is to learn and keep moving forward, especially when you know that everybody goes through this. All right, thank you so much. I think we have another question from Luca and Tyson. She says, how do you become a powerful woman and still maintain or retain your femininity? I sometimes get lost in also and don't remember to be a young girl that I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just have to be yourself. If you're if you're a young girl, that's all you can be. And you you serve the world best by being who you are. Mm. Because you bring a, a certain color you bring certain gifts to the world by virtue of who you are. And that's an important lesson for, for everyone, actually. The fact that you serve the world best and you serve yourself best by being yourself. And also realizing that you don't have to deny who you are to succeed. In fact, authenticity makes a huge difference. People respond positively to authenticity. When you are being your authentic self, when you're not faking it, you're actually being yourself. You're comfortable and it also gives out a more uh, relatable vibe to the people around you. So yes, please celebrate being a young girl, enjoy it and also go for it. All right, thank you so much. Right. The authentic okay. Um, I think we have a question from the audience. This question is yeah, do we always have to plan? Can't we have a mixture of planning and nature taking its course from Kemisola? Yes, you can. But the thing about nature taking its course is you can't plan for that and you can't control that. <laughs> right? So uh, yeah, of course, there are things that happen unplanned and, and there are things that happen quite positively unplanned. That's fine. The good thing about having a vision, right? And, and first of all, is that you are putting that energy out there. That makes it easier for even things to just take their natural course. So that's one thing. Also, when you plan and you're going through that, you just also open the space for, and, and the more likelihood that even those things that happen by chance happen in your favor, right? 
So yes, there is, uh, there is intentional action and there are things that happen, but who you are being impacts it all. All right, great. Thank you so much for that question. I'll let the answer rather. So I'm not bringing it to your book. And thank you very much for this book. You give us a couple, couple of copies of the book and I'm very grateful. Um, so it's 30 days of excellence. I just wanted to ask, what's the thing, the theme or the idea behind writing this book? What were the thoughts that came to you that said, okay, you need to write this book and put that to right here? Yes, so I do coaching and um, I share nuggets around personal effectiveness, self-leadership, uh, some of the nuggets I've shared this evening. And I had a lot of requests from people to say, can we find some of those nuggets somewhere, like a, a hub? And that's how I got the idea of actually writing a book. And, and um, you know, looking through it, you'll see that it's a daily guide. So it's not a conventional book. You have uh, snippets that represent principles that we can live by on a, on a regular basis. And it's 30 days because it takes a while for you to form a new habit, right? It's not just you hear something once and that's it. You're transformed. It takes a while. So, you know, 30 days, uh, you know, there are different uh, uh, bodies of research that talk about, you know, at least 21 days to get something uh, in your system. And I thought 30 days is a good, it's a month, right? So that's a good uh, uh, period. And it's not dated. So it's day one, day two, and you, you can start from, you know, from the beginning once you've done the 30 days. So that's what it is. It's a collection of um, concepts that we can reflect on that really help us to move forward. And um, you would also see there are two, there's the tabletop flip book, which is like a calendar that you put on your table and you can flip every day. And then there's a workbook that also has uh, calls to action and reflection points, you know, questions that you can reflect on. So that's, uh, that's how that came to be. And that's what that is. All right, great. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got another question that relates to career and excellence, right? So you also talk about excellence in this book a lot. Uh, how does excellence apply to living your best life and getting to the top of your career, which you are discussing to and are still doing exploits? So when I talk about excellence, right, there's the traditional definition of excellence, which is about ticking, ticking the boxes, getting high quality results and things like that. However, uh, a deeper meaning to excellence, which is what I really refer to. And that is serving your own internal vision, creating that masterpiece that comes from within you, where it's not really about, you know, the, 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 the standards that have been placed externally and what people expect. It's almost like even you being the, the, being the judge, right? You setting the standards, being of service to your vision, which is why you know, it always starts with that intention, clarity of vision and purpose, right? Where you're creating your own masterpiece. And again, linking that to the question about, you know, being a young girl and maintaining your femininity and, 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 and doing great things. It's, it's really about, you know, um, bringing the serving, birthing that vision that is inside you, which is bringing all of who you are to the table, right? So excellence in that, in that, um, from that perspective is about just giving the world the benefit of the best of you, being the best version of yourself. That's the summary of it, being the best version of yourself. Oh, great. Sean, how about you? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so there's a question from Bala. It says, what is the best way to courageously pitch yourself without looking pompous or overzealous? You know, this is something that we sometimes wrestle with. The fact that if I show how good I am, it's going to seem like I'm pompous, like I'm not modest, and so on and so forth. There's a time and place. If you're pitching, say you're at an interview, that's not the time to be, you know, <laughs> uh, trying to be modest. You have to show what you are made of, you know, or you're pitching to get support for your business. You have to show how it's amazing, how the team is amazing, the business idea, et cetera, right? Um, one thing I would say is focus on your intention. Let that intention be the determining factor. If your intention is to be pompous, right, then that may come through. But if your intention is 
I genuinely am trying to show you the value of, of this product or of what I bring to the table, then you can care less about what whether somebody else is thinking it's overzealous, et cetera. We can't, you know, live our lives trying to, you know, second guess what people think, right? What you can control is what you think and how you show up. So I would say be clear about your intention. Make sure if your intention is not to be pompous or proud, then uh, you know, from that place, just uh, be the best you can be. Don't dim your light because you think that would make somebody else happy. For all you know, it may not. We're guessing. You're guessing what's in somebody else's mind. You don't know, you know? And so as long as your intention is pure, just go for it and be your best self. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I think we'll just take one or two questions, then we'll yeah, wrap up for the day. So someone is asking, and unfortunately she says, Seeing that the tech industry used to be a male niche, what did you do differently that made you top of the industry? So, um, well, I don't know that I'm exactly top of the industry, but <laughs> I understand the, the um, substance behind the question. So from a very young age, I, was, I had a vision. I wouldn't have described it as a vision back then, but that's what it was. I had a clear view of how I wanted to show up, right? I, I knew I wanted to be at the top of my game. And when I was in school, like in, uh, you know, at uni, there were, um, I was very conscious about, you know, making sure that I was building myself up, doing the work. There were times when we had assignments. And so I read computer engineering at Obafemi Awolo University, Leife for my first degree. There were just two women in my class, a class of probably about 50 people, just two ladies. And there were times we would have assignments and, and people would say, uh, the, the guys would say, don't worry, we'll do it and give you the handout. You know, why are you stressing yourself? You're a woman, et cetera. Now, I never succumbed to that. I never, I always showed up. If there was group work, I played my part, right? I always made sure that I did my part, right? Um, and earned my place. And there wasn't any con concept in my head that I couldn't, that because I was a lady, um, but because I was female, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I just didn't have that. I believe that, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to give my best and that's all there was for me, right? So I would push myself and give my best. And, you know, uh, if the result was, uh, was at the top, fantastic. But for me, it was about being of service to myself because I, I I felt that you do yourself a disservice if you don't use your talents or if you don't push yourself forward because you're making a statement to yourself and to the world that you are not as good as you really are. And so you owe it to yourself to be your best self, which is the whole concept about excellence. It's not about being somebody else or like somebody else. It's you, what do you have to offer? Being of service to that, whatever you were, you know, whatever talents you have, bringing those to the table and maximizing those. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I'm guessing that's it for the night. So your final was to young people in their 20s who are looking to do amazing stuff, to do exploits and actually do to last. Wow. If I could go back to my 20s, <laughs> feels like a long time ago. I'm it's, an exciting, <laughs> it's an exciting time. Your life is ahead of you and life is what you make it. Don't narrow yourself too quickly. Don't allow the limiting beliefs to run the show. Yeah. Don't do that too quickly. Believe that whatever life you envisage for yourself, you can make it happen. Draw to yourself things and things that inspire you. If you need to learn, lean in and do the learning. This is the time to, to till. This is the time to sow the seeds, to build the foundation. 
think about how you spend your time. How you spend your time is a reflection of the quality of, it impacts the quality of your life experience. So make sure you're spending your time in things that move you closer to your vision. Thank you help so is available. Much. Oh, sorry. Just, just help is available. Leverage the people around you and the tools around you, and just go for it. Have fun in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, great. Yeah, thank you so much. I think, I think that was really, really instructive. I mean, if you live our best life, have fun while doing it. So please, we would like to know how we can how we can um, reach out to you or follow you or see more of your post and your... Uh, I know you have an event coming up in December. Um, I think you just tell us your Instagram page and how to get your book and how to... How the, how the audience can just reach out to you and know more of you. Yes. So my Instagram, my social media handle is at J Ehimwa. You can type it in the chat window. At mm -hmm. J and my last name. Uh, that's Instagram, Facebook. In uh, on LinkedIn is if you just type Juliet Ehimwa, and I'll come up. And and Twitter. So that's Instagram and Twitter. J at J Ehimwa. And um, I believe the link to get the book has been shared. I, I saw it scrolling through. Um, yeah. It's been shared by the organizers, and um, I, I post a lot of uh, a lot of these nuggets and, and events and opportunities on social media. So, all right, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Please want to see your comments. Appreciating Juliet, this was really an amazing session. Tell us how you felt. Tell us how it was for you. Yeah, tell us. Something is saying this event has been the best investment I made in myself in recent times. I'm definitely going to put everything back to repeat. Thank you so much, Samson. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Ma. It was really, really great to have you here. Thank you very much, Ma. That's a magic bureau. I How definitely in touch. Thank you so much, Juliet. I'll definitely be in touch. I mean, it's been an amazing period. Thank you for even staying in for yesterday's session and following through for the gigs, even for the I mean the sessions you're going to be having in December. Thank you for be with us and we're so grateful for all the nuggets and the lessons that we've dropped. All right, it's been an amazing You're very period. Welcome. Yeah, I'll definitely be in connection with you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, guys. Hello, David. Can you hear me? Yeah, my internet was going out. Wow, bro, it's the end of 20 stories. <laughs> wow. Woo! <laughs> wow, man. I'm, I'm, I feel I'm like excited screaming. Excited and I'm tired, <laughs> but I'm excited more. How's it been for you, bro? How's it been? Thank you, Stan. Um, it's, been, um, it's been amazing. I mean, I just thank God for everything. I mean, I know all the work you guys have, everybody has put in with the design. Yeah. With, I mean, so much work, and we're happy everything came out successful. And we thank everybody for joining in. Thank you for sharing. Thank you to our volunteers. To me for I see you. Mercy Udo. Thank you so much, Miracle. I can see all your comments. I can see all your questions. Thank you, Princess. Thank you, Bola. Thank you, Bola. Thank you, guys. So, David, what, what do you have to say? Well, this is just the beginning. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's just the beginning. We have 2023 just in front of us, and it's looking to be our best year ever. So, guys, make sure you're part of the 20 Stripe. Um, like I said, it's an educative and an entertaining community. You bring the absolute best every single time. So try to try your way. Make sure you join 20tribe.com slash join. Send the links to your friends to join. The links for this sessions are still available on YouTube for a limited period of time. So you want to go and watch that. Um, the recordings are also available. Send a DM to 20 Tribe um, in, on all socials so that you can have access to the recordings, the audio recordings. Right. So ensure that you're part of whatever it is that we're doing. We're grateful for you for joining. GMK, I see you from the very beginning. Uh, yes, the you thank you so much. And to everyone I've been to our amazing volunteers, I'm super grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, guys. Um, and especially now to the back end, um, to the back end, guys. Um, we have had the amazing co founders, right? So, Tony Strike is co founded by two guys. Um, Myself and Sanusi Usman, who has been in the back and doing amazing stuff. Usman Sanusi, do you want to say a bit, a, a bit about him? You know, people don't see him, but the guy is doing amazing stuff. What do you think? 
Yes, I mean, I mean, you know, it's, it's the work that is behind that people don't see that is a lot of work. <laughs> Trust me, that's the that's the work that's the hardest. The post, yeah. the comments, the everything to make this seamless. I mean, it's really amazing. Thank you, Usman. Thank you, Adeoba. Thank you, everybody that's been working. Thank yeah. you, Mess. Thank you, Saka. <laughs> We have Tulu also, we have uh, Daniel Ubimbi, we have um, Praise, we have Messi, we have Delapo, and we have uh, Kazim, who is also giving us amazing content, right? Guys, these guys have been doing incredible work. And of course, all our volunteers who have been sharing, have been engaging us for the last two weeks. Thank you so much, guys. We are so grateful to you guys. So all our speakers, we're also very grateful. Thank you guys for staying. Man, I am... I'm grateful, I'm excited, but I'm very tired. I'm not sure about the show, but man, um, I'm happy that this is, we're wrapping up shortly. Any final words yes. from the show? Yes, sorry? Any final words yeah, from the show? Yeah, people are asking Which now they can join 20's tribe. Um, www.com, www.20's tribe.com slash join. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's to reach me, I'm giving the last money on Instagram, um, on LinkedIn also, you can reach me. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Moving the park, right, so they're yeah. going to be doing playing the video for moving the park shortly. Yes, uh, moving the park is the largest uh, movie experience, outdoor movie experience. And if you have not been part of any of the editions, um, this one is actually a special edition on the beach, right? So, um, tech team will actually play the video right now. It's happening in Lagos and in Abuja and in Ibadan. So, we did that a QR code that will also display on your screen that you need to take a screenshot of. Uh, so that it will take you to the link it will take you the link for you to be able to make payments there are also discounts that are available for you um if you use the, the discount code 20 stripe 20 stripe um it's showing right now on your screen 20 is all 20 small letters right so use that uh, so text him please play that video um and also let's show the qr code it's december the most wonderful time of the year the biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe, and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. 
This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe, and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's this. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Radler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. 
Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach Uniru, Lagos on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Uniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIP experience on Instagram. It's December, the most wonderful time of the year. 
The biggest movie screening experience in Nigeria is happening in two cities, Lagos and the premier city, Ibadan. That's right. Get ready to experience the waves whistling while you enjoy a movie night under the stars at the luxurious landmark beach, Oniru, Lagos, on the 10th of December. And on the 17th of December, experience nature at its finest at the beautiful Agodi Gardens in Ibadan. Show starts at 5 p.m. and the movie starts at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets online at the Landmark Citizens app at 4K and at www.tix.africa forward slash MIPEXP for the premiere edition at 3K. Grab your pillows and blankets because movie night doesn't get better than this. This experience is sponsored by Star Rattler, Desperado, Pepsi, iInvest, 20 Stripe and Trace Niger. For more information, please follow our MIPEXP.